Good morning. Welcome into Herd at Sports Radio AM 590 ESPN, Omaha ESPN Tri Cities. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well here at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill on the Pillar Exterior Stage. We got a great Thursday for you. There's trap kind of Thursday. You know, it's a lovely day outside. On a perfect day. Oh, I was I going know like, that I can count on you. I was going to go like Bill Withers, like Ooh. a lovely day. I like Bill Withers too. Yeah, I, I went a little new edition. That's fine. It's kind of old edition, kind of withered up edition. Well, Bill withered up edition, right? Oh, created. <laughs> See what I very, did there? Very, very, <laughs> very quick on your floor shines. <laughs> go uh, yeah, I'm. A, I, that used to be my favorite song. Really? Oh yeah, when I get in my feels in in high school over this certain girl that was my first year girlfriend too but she was in high school back at northwest when i was in college yeah i was like i'm gonna send you a song (laughs) 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 hey man kids kids these days will never understand the power of a good like a mixtape yeah yeah. it was mixed cds for me i was gonna say back in the day was it a cassette oh how Mm -hmm. about when your world changed when they had like auto reverse and it would flip sides without oh, you having to do man. it. Oh man, you didn't have to it like would just like pop that thing out. You're like, Meh. you know what I'm so my sweet spot was like, okay, you had those little Walkman CD players mm-hmm. and they had like the three second skip protection yeah. and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> they come out with 10 second skip protection and you were balling. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Every once in a while I still have like a little PTSD with the skips because I'll be riding in the car or whatever. And I'll hit one of those spots where satellite radio or something gets cut out for a second. Mm-hmm. I was like, did my CD just skip? Yeah, it's right. like, no, no, it did not. You don't even have a CD player in this car. Hey, listen, on, on <laughs> April 18th, I could walk to my, I could go to my mom's house and in the basement, she's going to have a dual cassette CD player with the detachable speakers. Oh yeah. And there are still two tapes in there. One of them is mine. <laughs> If I'm lying, I'm dying. Isn't that the best part about your parents living in the same house for like? I, I want long? the tape. I just don't know what to play it on. <laughs> you have to take the whole thing with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. So yeah, can you stand the rain? So I, I've got. I haven't had. Have to... you ever seen the rain? Green and clear water. Uh, CCR. No, I know how that goes. Say that again. Or say have that you again? ever seen? Oh the yeah, yeah, rain yeah. That's usually the backdrop in a lot of, now. of yeah. cheesy movies. Yeah, a little bit. So that's song, that's something I would hear in like Sweet Home Alabama or something. Probably. You Lo- ever see that movie? Yeah, Loki kind of like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I mixed that dude up with Matthew McConaughey for like six years. Oh, yeah. Josh something. Um, Hater? No. Hamilton? Nope. Perry? Still no. Yeah. Josh. I'm going to look it up because it's going to bother me. I'm out of Josh. <laughs> uh, jo- McCown? Josh Humble? Josh Dotzler? Josh Dotzler? <laughs> uh, Shane, I need another Josh. Who, by the S- way, SQ? I don't know Josh Eskew. He used to play center. Josh board. Jacobs? Josh Jacobs. Ooh, that's a good one. I hope so for young Jacob Padilla's sake. Because you invested 15. Josh Lucas. Josh Ludke? No, a different guy. Lucas. Ludke. He's, uh, my I, I, he, he's I, the main character of that I'm movie. Gonna, I'm going to invite Josh to Caleb's graduation. Is that weird? Lukey? Yeah. No, do whatever you want, man. I like Josh. Caleb likes Josh. They have unusual embraces at half court. <laughs> like, what up? Give them a little, dap it up a little bit. Dude, it's kind of a long one, and neither one of them is touchy feely. So it's always fun to watch. Right? That's it's why, like, I was I was honored when Caleb, like, dapped me up after a football game. Oh, yeah. He's, so I know he's not like a hugger. And I was like, oh, this nice. day don't. Last night, let's laying on the couch in the dark. <laughs> not in his room, like, on the, in the big part. Yeah, like, in the, in the TV room. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm just trying to decide what I want to watch on television. Why are you doing it out here? I don't know. I'm sick of waiting for my fire stick to update. I've been waiting for like two weeks. What? And immediately, I almost went to anger. Like, you know, the emojis thing and the little stack blows? Yeah. Because he's so, I go back to the Coach Felder story. Like, he's so impatient. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, "What, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, you turn it on and it's it's like uploading. And so I'm like, look, man. I don't think that's okay. supposed to take two weeks. He starts it over if it takes more than 20 seconds. It literally took me nine minutes, bro. Nine minutes. I Caleb, said, look, man. Caleb, so Caleb, I need so you to I do told better. him to come in here. I said, just watch this. Just see, just patience, right? <laughs> 
But it's like even like if a game's uploading or he's waiting for a test to download, like he'll go do something else. Like, and that's fine. I get it. A lot of people are are you know have really short attention spans. But his, I wonder where he gets that his from. Portal, dude, I sat and waited eight <laughs> minutes. I laid on that dude's carpet. I laid on his floor last night, just seeing if he if I was gonna lose my mind or he's just a ding dong. And it turns out it's the latter. Like. <laughs> You know how when you're waiting for something to upload on your smart TVs, just give it like the after the first three minutes, it goes fast. Yeah, you just gotta wait it out. But you could wait three minutes. Nothing. You start it over every time. No technology that exists in the world right now, unless it's broken. I said, "Oh Lord, it's gonna take very long." We're in trouble. I said, "Who's kind of want to?" I said, "Who's living with you?" Like we figured that out yet? He's like Donovan Jones, baby. (laughs) I was like, "Oh, cool! (laughs) Somebody with some sense." That's fine. At least there's one reasonable head. No, and you know I'm a huge, I'm a huge. You love Donovan. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that was like yeah, good to go. Yep, I know his dad will beat him too. So you know, speaking, <laughs> <laughs> we're in business. Speaking of technology, Dang, man, how, why, why does Donnie have that black guy? I don't know, man. D Rock came down to have some speaks. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm driving in this morning, right? And it's you know it's rainy and whatever. And I just keep thinking to myself, in the year 2024 of our Lord, yes, we can't figure out a better way to paint visible lines on the road. Oh, than to have people actually out there? Or no, no. To, I mean, to be able to see them when it's raining. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm sure somebody's in the lab making some iridescent paint or, or something. I'm just saying. Why I, can't they do that stuff like luminol? The Shane? amount of technology that I have in my phone could run... The they, they can find dried blood from like seven years ago, but they can't find lines you that's, can see. That's what I mean. Lines. Like, what? I don't, I don't know, Ravi. Did you almost swerve? It's better than the guys that I like just, can't see pull me. their trucks up on the island mm-hmm. and walk the opposite way of traffic, assuming you'll move because they're <laughs> painting the street. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shoot, man. I better get out of the way. You better. Can you imagine <laughs> the stones? Oh, I, I no. I, it, it, t- I'm terrified I get anxiety just driving watching, yeah. by them. Yeah, just watching them. Yeah. Uh, not so, a fan. Some dudes on my TikTok that like does the scaff, not scaffolding. He does like uh, health and safety inspections oh. for like these big monstrosities. Yeah. This dude found a little itty bitty missing screw on on some contraption, but he's 300 and some odd feet in the air. I'm like, that's not going to go well. It gave me the. I may be able to find. It gave me the willies just watching it. I'm I saw. Like, I'm like, how much could, could I get over that for a certain amount of money? I could not, unless I'm heavily medicated, in which case I'm probably not going to be very good at that job anymore. So, so I, I was just thinking because I was still mad at you yesterday for your Colorado take and <laughs> losing. You're like, oh, I, it's still nonsense. I mean, maybe you need to frame it different than it landed yesterday, but you literally said, no, I think I said what I meant. <laughs> You rather lose to Colorado than operate than way. not ru- than not run your program correctly. One hundred percent. You can always fix running your program. I don't <laughs> you think can't you can't go back. I, so, I, so I was like, I, okay. no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh oh, we're gonna Jay, Jay, look at we're gonna uh, st- muscle heads mad at me. We're gonna start here today, apparently, because muscle heads mad at me. You're cho- you're choosing violence this morning, so. No, you can't always fix how you run your program because we saw Nebraska do it poorly for two decades. No, see, that's okay. Yes and no. Yes and no. But you, you, if you're capable. But that's what I mean. I'd rather have a guy that's capable in Matt Rule than I don't know what Colorado's record is going to be this year. I think it's going to be bad because I think that place is a hot dumpster fire, right? It's just wet garbage all over the place. <laughs> You know, like how you like roll your garbage can out and it's raining and then they leave it open and they didn't get everything out of there and it's just disgusting. That's what Colorado looks like from here. Wow. Okay. But I'm not ruling. I don't know what that's going to look like in wins and losses. Right. I have no idea. But I would rather take an L to Colorado this year Mm -hmm. than ever have that guy in charge of my football program. I I won't like, uh, I won't fist fight on top of that hill, but I do think. I will fist fight. I'll I'm not. Hill. I'm just not. I'll, built I'll stand on business to openly negotiate a willingness to lose. 
it's not a willingness. It just seems yucky. It's not a kind of like wet garbage. Yeah, kind of like Colorado's entire. Program. Like if you there'll be, it takes an extraordinary scenario where you you could pose it to me. I think you just don't like the way I'm saying it. I don't like conceding a loss because no, it's not conceding. It a is. Loss. No, it's not. It's not. It's not saying, Hey, I will trade you this L in exchange for this. No, that's what you said. No. You said I would rather lose rather and trading are not the same thing. Now we got the semantics. Post yeah. back. I, I don't want to be in. It's very uncomfortable for me. Um, and maybe it's because of my long standing relationships with lawyers uh, to negotiate L's. <laughs> I mean, we've both been divorced. That's all. So that's all. That's all. Divorce I, I, is is negotiating I just an L. Don't like conceding here competition. Let me put it to you this way, okay? If you're sending your kid to a program, or you're uh -huh. going to is maybe this, is this hypothetical? <laughs> yeah. Um, or you're hey, going... hypothetically, if you have a kid going to college, yeah, if you have a kid that's going to play Division One football somewhere, I don't know wherever. Okay. I mean, this is very you know, it's a okay. similar hypothetical for both. Shout of out us. my. North Nebraska Wesleyan. That's right, a baller. Um, Actually, she got a chance. Got a chance. My point is, if you're a father in that situation, if you're a coach in that situation, you would rather operate the same way and let the wins and losses fall where they may. Then, so I okay, yes, I, I I get no. I mean, I'm not morally bankrupt, but what I would say is, a a, a one time. We're we just talking about a one time scenario. Because that's where I you, you may lose. You me. get mad. You, you got you didn't like the fact that I made it so specific to Colorado. But that's what we're comparing is the way Colorado operates versus the way Nebraska operates. I will take I, and I and I told you too, like along those lines. You see, like these interviews that he kind of does nationally. Yeah, people are constantly trying to goad him into saying something negative about Dion. He's not going to no. take the bait. No, that's fine. That's why I'm here. <laughs> You remember, like, uh, you remember on Key and Peele, like Barack Obama's anger translator? You're what? I'm Matt Rule's Colorado translator. You're what? Okay. I would rather take my chances with the way Matt Rule's going to operate his program than, if, than the way that Deion Sanders is going to operate his program. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. So we start there. And if that says, hey, I have to take this, I'm going to take it this way. And, if that means we end up losing to Colorado, one loot game to Colorado or whoever else for that matter, I'm not making the trade for the way they operate just to get that win. Like, I think maybe if you reframe it that way, it's like, I'm not going to trade a win to be morally bankrupt or to be whatever you think Dion is. Obviously, I don't. And I'm not saying he is. I'm saying what I would negotiate making me moral. I'm not talking about his morals. I, 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 I'm talking. I, yeah. That's I think he, his priorities are out of line. I, I, don't, I don't know him like that. I don't either, but. When people tell you who you, who they are, believe them. Like he's he's told us who he is quite a bit. I'm not gonna like he's gone out of his way to tell us his priorities. Wow, way too much salt. Mm. And I'm just I'm not in on that guy. I'm a hundred percent out. It's okay. And I would rather take my chances with whatever the record looks like with Matt Rule than I would be like, oh yeah, you could guarantee me a certain number of wins with Dion and be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll All right, pass. I, I guess at the end of the day, because you, you you kind of, um, I feel like you you took my clip that I was gonna <laughs> put in the chamber <laughs> when you said if you're sending your kid to, because then I had to or I had the conversation I just had yesterday at lunch, right? Yeah, I just had to. I had, had to, to reframe how you were thinking about it. I'm like, man, if you have a loved one of mine for X amount of time. How does that make me feel? Like that's the tr that's the trump card, right? Because say that again. If you're going to give me, if you're going to, there's something you care about. Mm -hmm. I, hey, take one of your dogs, for instance. Mm -hmm. You love your pets. Yep. You're going to heavily scrutinize where you're going to leave your pups. Hundred percent for an extended. I period don't leave them to, with almost anybody. Right. So th that's that would be. But that's kind the of my equivalent. point. Uh, no, I know. That's what was disarming. Yeah. Because when you said that, it's like, yeah. Like, you wouldn't want to send your kid to go play for Dion. I don't think. Not on. From what you know. From what he's yeah. told us. From all. About the, who he is. If I'm just context clues, deductive reasoning. Yeah. You're 100% right. Because that's a dude. And this is this is why. Because I didn't really have any strong feelings about Dion before he got to Colorado. Because I really. We didn't. I didn't either. We didn't right? see. Isn't that weird? We like, we talked about this openly. I was like. 
We didn't know. see this much of him at Jackson State, right? He's been very upfront since he got to Colorado. And a you lot think the Netflix series didn't do him any fl- favors. I was gonna say flavors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably didn't do boy. probably didn't do him any flavors either. Um, oh, he got jokes. I don't think anything he does publicly does him any favors because I don't think he's a good person. Now that is such a strong. We don't know that when people tell you who they are, believe. But them. he's not telling you he's a bad person. Fundamentally, he's he, telling me what he's about, and I think he's not that, robbing. But he like, what's he doing? Listen. There's a spectrum of bad people, okay, right? Okay. Not like okay. you don't. Have, so it's not Gacy. You, yeah, you, <laughs> but, don't, you don't have to be a serial killer to be a bad dude. Hey, what do you got against serial killers? Not a fan. Out on serial killers. Is that a hot take? <laughs> Maybe it is for DB. He's like, well, I don't know. I think they're, you know, wow. I think some of their methods wow. are pretty interesting. Uh, um, Shane, do you see his big old brush <laughs> that he's just put me in this corner? I mean, What's up, girl? you need. I- I'm just, hey, but, but, this is so wrong. But do you know what I immediately just thought of? What? Greg Doyle. <laughs> Isn't that awful? We'll get to Greg Dale, Doyle. Don't worry. And I like. I used to like him. He's gotten weird. No, see, okay, you guys. No, stop. not not you, the, you, not you, just you, this. Hey, He's listen, gotten weird. You, okay, you gotta stop. He's gotten weird. You got to stop. I don't you actually. Need... Like one or two things happen happens and you're just and I'm like out. all in or all out. Yeah. You can't like slow down. I mean, I'm 36. I've you operated have what I've, I have. I've operated this way for a while. It seemed to work out for me. Dude, just <laughs> emotional. Like <laughs> we gotta get you some 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 buoys. We gotta balance you out. Some some so, buoys. So Greg Doyle like has some, does, da- some David da- buoys. Has an does an article you don't like. Or you're out sick. or He's no, he's been weird for a couple k- years. Kind of, kind of icky with <laughs> Caitlin Clark, and you're like, I'm out. Yeah, I, it's it, listen. <laughs> the Caitlin Clark thing isn't the tipping point. He said, listen, but it's kind of like Dion, right? There's a body of evidence where he starts getting weird on me for Doyle, or just being icky in Dion's case, and then something happens where he just pushes me over the edge. Like, yeah, I'm good here. Wash my hands of this human being. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> right? Like, I don't need to. I don't need to operate with people that I don't that I'm not vibing with. People love the long shots. Uh, hey, I, I gotta stop. See, I almost, I almost made a love reference. It's not funny, but it was awkward. And then she like turned the page almost seamlessly without saying a word. It yeah. was the look. Yeah. No, she looked at him like, "Are you out of your mind?" So the cool thing about her, and I know it, for like the last three months, it sounds like. I really like Caitlin Clark. She just doesn't make me mad. Okay. How she does some other people, people even with the antics even, and whatever. No, no, it doesn't, doesn't, it, no, I it, don't either. It, it doesn't bother me. And, and so, um, for her age, for her ability to process that, and she's not going to make a big deal about it. No. Everybody else yeah. will, which is perfect. Cause her ability to process real time you could tell she looked like a person with how she kind of gave him the long look where she was thinking, do I go here with this dude or no, nah, I'm gonna let that ride. Right. Just it seemed like she processed in real time. I don't have to say anything. The oh, Internet will take care of it for me. No. So, you know, OK, that's awful advance. That's quick. But OK, so maybe. But do you know what I thought? What? I thought she thought to herself that doesn't even deserve a response. Maybe. Maybe, like, I'm, maybe I'm going to Galaxy Brain on it. Cause, or maybe I'm playing the results, right? Because the internet did take care of it. Jeez. And now, now his, his his peers are, are letting old. I mean, it's a bad look. I don't know that it was malicious, but it's a bad look. Yeah, we may have to reset that for context. We will. Uh, I, I want to finish this Dion point, though, real quick. Because I, I don't understand how you can see everything that he does. Me? Personally, Any, just, just anybody. Just oh, and people. say, hey, send my kid there. It's, or some, because we talked about this off air yesterday because we ran out of time on the show like we often do. And my point was the way that he treats people on camera. First of all, you ever been out with one of those couples that fights in public like while you're at dinner? Mm. Or they like kind of get into like they kind of like bicker a little Pro- bit. Probably like, not the, like fight, fight, but bicker. Yeah. The first time around. Yeah. 99 times out of 100, it's worse at home. 
right? Whatever they do in public, it's usually worse at home. Yeah, I'm with you. So I'm going on the assumption that whatever I see from Dion on camera, on camera. it's going to be worse off camera. Strong take, but I, I, I can't. You can see where the logic gets yeah. me there, right? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Like, if you're willing to say those things on camera, mm -hmm. what, usually people aren't better behind the scenes. Usually. Yeah, but. If they're bad in front of the scenes. Like, they might you, be neutral. But don't you know a lot of people, and again, this isn't in defense of, this is just the yeah. other side of the street. Yeah. Where you're like, they're not really like that. Sure. You just have to get to know them. But. Usually those people, those are, there are a lot of those. People. Usually those, right? But usually those people are not. Oh, that guy gives me the ick, or that guy is super cringe, or that guy seems like he doesn't care about people. It's usually. Haven't you ever been around people that come across as pretty standoffish, but they're really not? Yes, usually it's a little. But he's not standoffish. That's the difference. No, it doesn't matter. No, what it, it is. No, I'm, it does. Though. Hey, stop I it. Think. Stop it. Okay, one, one second. Yeah. Okay. You were we're talking about somebody giving you the somebody giving you the perception of blank but it's not this that's your general premise yes but it's more specific than that okay well i because you're making it specific to the person no let's just talk about let's just talk about i think there's certain per personality, personality types, types that okay but there are some people that you meet and it's like mm -hmm. oh they're they're not really like that you just have to get to know them mm -hmm. the difference for me Th that's is not the a hot take type of, no it's not but it's the type of personality because I think, and maybe I'm wrong here, in my experiences, the people that you meet that are better once you get to know them all kind of find and fall into a certain category of uh, maybe they come off a little gruff or a little standoffish, but they're not actively disparaging people in front but, of you. So, okay, now that's way too specific because no, what happens it is. That's fine. That's I'm opinions profiling make the, a, a, opinions make the world go round. But a lot of times, unless you're a sociopath or a narcissist, and he may be one of or both. Sometimes you keep people at a distance or you use a verbal strainer because of where you come from and you have to sift through the rubbish quickly. It may not be an indictment of your character. Sometimes people are like that to save themselves the drama of trying to figure it out. They put it out there, whether it's really what they're about or not, and then they let you figure it out because they've either gotten lazy or tired or they're over people. Well, you can certainly sell me on the fact that he's lazy. I'll buy that. <laughs> Um, that's DB. I'm Robbie. Lula. We'll, we'll have more Herd at Sports Radio coming up next. Welcome back here to Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula. We're here on the pillar exterior stage. Make sure you're watching us. What's wrong with my camera? Speaking of Twitter, watching. Facebook, and YouTube, I don't know. Why is it oh, just my big head? Oh, oh, I don't know. It looks like you're not. It looks like you're on the your uh, computer camera. FaceTime and not um not the external. Shane, camera. is it is it Logia or Loga? Logitech. Logitech. I, I, I'm to the point now where I'm not listening to anything you say. Because Shane, it's pronounced what, what, Logic. So Shane, Logitech. Oh, okay, Jim. Logic. GIF guy. Yeah, Gra graphic, graphic image format. GIF. L liquid. One more time for those in the front. <laughs> thank you thank you a lot you're welcome it is logitech okay so uh, let me let me just let me reset sorry, here because you talking yeah Dion or uh damon and i are arguing about d no we're not well a little bit we were that's kind of what happened in the last segment <laughs> um i missed it what happened did you just did you just like dissociate you black out a little bit there yeah i had like so I'm, let me say this in, uh you'll like this i acknowledge there's not one well, there's not a one iota of a chance. It's, it's I acknowledge true. that your argument is plausible. That that could be what's happening with Dion. I am not willing to forgive the damage what he does publicly does in order to find out. And you're consistent. That's okay. Whether or not privately he's a better person. I, than I mean, a year ago you were mad at how you didn't like the exit meetings. And so, no, and so I, I get it that yeah. you're standing on that. And I, I, I do think it's cool, though. I, I want to I throw you uh, a yeah. little love muffin. Do you eat muffins? This one is full of love. <laughs> Not frequently, I like no. the fact that uh, that somebody that genuinely... Because I, I, I'm uh, this going to cut deep. Somebody that comes across is genuinely not liking people. That would be you. <laughs> Everything you... A lot of what you do, your mannerisms are very wall-oriented. Okay. Colander strainer type stuff. A little more spirit of this, if you will. I test people. Is that, in fact, who you are? 
I think it's an element of who I am. The answer to that, if you're being honest with yourself, is no. A very caring person for those that are in his circle. Sure. We'll go through the, we'll, we'll put up with a lot. We'll do a lot. Mm -hmm. We'll eat a lot. I watched you beautifully orchestrate the behind the scenes of a funeral. Stress to the gills. Mad, if you will. <laughs> I, I don't like proving points like this, but no, what I'm telling you fair. is. It's fair. It, it, sometimes it's very off-putting. Sure. But it's not who you are. It, it is absolutely not who you are. That's fair. So, like, when I, but I know why you do it. You do it because, number one, there's past history. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have some learned behaviors that allow you to deal with riffraff without even really having to deal with it. You can set it aside without it even really getting close to you based on your initial Fair. behaviors, correct? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is it could easily be something like that. But I do like the fact the business that you're standing on is extremely consistent. You harped on the exit interviews mm -hmm. for every example that you gave of how he's treating young people. I like that because you're a self-proclaimed guy that says kids are a tough hang. That's the aura that you perceive that yeah. you put off. But man, it's crazy how you're resting on the laurels of Man, he treated people bad, so I don't like that guy. That is very contrarian to your personality. Just because that's the example, of, right? That's fair. I, but just because I don't like kids doesn't mean I don't <laughs> uh, that I want other people to treat them poorly. Just because he treats people poorly doesn't mean that he doesn't like them. That's fine. I'm that, 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 just saying. But that. if you like someone, don't treat them poorly. Like that's a bad attribute to have. Have you ever watched people in relationships no, that I have. bring baggage? They that bring their own Louis Vuitton. I, <laughs> I have. No, I have. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good reference there. I have right, and it and it ruins relationships a lot of times. It can. <laughs> yeah, it can. If it can, you don't can. handle your baggage mm -hmm. or find a way to or, deal with it in a healthy manner, it can ruin your relationship. Yeah, because what I think he's, uh, what I think people like that have to be able to do is is surround people surround themselves with people that can look in their blind spots for them and i don't know and that i he's just good don't at that. think he can i just don't think his i just don't know if his he doesn't seem is, willing is, to do is, that is built for that and so here's where i mean here's what really comes down to me with the odd is he seems from what we've seen publicly again never met him don't know him from what we've seen publicly he seems to treat players in a very transactional manner mm -hmm. For as much as I don't like kids, I did coach college basketball for almost 10 years. <laughs> it's just funny to hear right? you say that. I don't. Do, I don't do you like, like me. Not really. I have a job to do. I don't <laughs> well, I don't mind college kids as much, although they're still idiots a lot of the time. But I really when I say kids are a tough hang, it's usually small children because yeah. they're like crying and you have there's diapers. It's a whole thing, right? <laughs> like once you become they're, they're cutting into your finances. Yeah, hundred percent. But like I, I'm not interested in spending my money on little like poop machines. I'm not. That's not for me. Oh man. Um, but but diaper genies are not overrated, by the way. I would imagine they're not, but I, I'll never know. <laughs> but like by the time you become a functional person, mm -hmm. like and, and you know college is borderline whether you're a functional person or not, but you're getting there. It's a lot easier for me to be around you, and I do understand the importance of that job because I did that job, right? Not at the same level, but I was in the business of taking care of of mentoring of building relationships with college kids mm -hmm. so i appreciate that on a very serious level there's also a reason i got out of it because i didn't have the energy for it anymore right it was too much work and i didn't want to treat those kids poorly because i didn't have the energy for them i didn't want to do that i also like to do in radio more and i knew i had to make a choice right so i wasn't going to half-ass it with kids when their lives mattered and come and try and do this too. So I was like, hey, I'm going to do the radio thing. I'm going to walk away from this because I didn't have the energy to give them what they deserved. What bothers me the most about Dion is he seems to treat those children in a very transactional manner. Young young people. You're a child until you're like 25. I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> okay. you just like, come on. <laughs> I was an idiot until I was 30. Like I, I acknowledge that fully, yeah. right? 25 is on the early end of when most people stop being stupid. But like, he treats his kids, his players, whatever, in a super transactional manner. That bothers me. That's what I like about Coach Rule. Because at the end of the day, 
you can give him absolutely nothing in terms of value to his football program. And if you still try and achieve the things that he asks of you, he will love you forever. Mm. Like, hey, once, once I'm your coach or once you're my player, I'm your player forever. He said that, right? He said that two days ago. Once you play for me, you play for me forever. That's what he said. He's thought- calling guys that are, that are playing on other teams. He's calling their coaches, make sure they're okay. You can provide zero value to him as a football player, and he will care about you forever. That is not the vibe that I get for Dion, and that's what I would trade. I, like, if that means I take a loss against a rival, okay, I will make that trade. Because I'm not interested in people being transactional with other people. That's a thing that I will not stand for. <laughs> I want to play a song for you, but the powers that be won't let me do it. Hey, what's your, uh, what's your brother's name, Robbie? Raj. Raj. Oh, so he, he had the comment there? Did he? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If he did, it might be. Oh, yeah, oh. he did. What did he, say? <laughs> he says, I don't like spending money on little poop machines, says the guy who owns three dogs. <laughs> Fair. That's what I'm saying. Fair. Oh, man. Shout out, Rosh. Man. Qu- no. The... <laughs> he Qu- said, quit man. hanging up on me. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Listen, if I hey, could... right. now that I made a good point, and I, if I could just let the kids outside and they could poop in the yard, that'd be fine. <laughs> If I, I could just, if I want to go somewhere and I was be like, hey, you got to go to your kennel I, now, I just that'd think, be fine. I just think it's Baby kennels are highly it's, illegal. It's interesting that, that it. somebody that spends an inordinate amount of energy fending off potential nonsense just because for the potential that he might have to go through with it, mm-hmm. it doesn't like a guy that is fending off potential nonsense just so he potentially doesn't have to go through with it. If if he if that's what he is, I don't. Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. If that's what he is, and that's a plausible explanation, then I've read him wrong. I see him as he, the nonsense. He very well may not be good at what he does, but I'm just telling you, I don't think it makes somebody a bad person. That's fair. He might not be a bad person. I do think he's bad at what he does, and I think <laughs> treating trans, people transactionally is pretty close to making you a bad person. Like that's that's just how I feel. So generally speaking, people don't establish relationships for what they can get out of it. No, because that no. Well, you sh- you shouldn't. Typically, a lot of times do, they do. Typically, do people establish relationships? Often. For what, okay. Yes. Is that semantics, police? Here, I need TK. Is that transactional? It depends on if the relationship is genuine or not. Really, I mean that's what it comes down to, and I can't tell that from the outside. But what he tells me from the outside doesn't look promising for him. <laughs> well, I didn't say we're not talking about if this is going to work or not. <laughs> I mean, because I don't, I, I clearly agree with you. I mean, it's not, it doesn't look promising I, for him as a human. I, I don't see. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I lose you. <laughs> well, you, you I'm t- willing you t- to pass judgment that <laughs> you are not. <laughs> that's kind of what we learned here. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's TB. I'm Robbie Lula. We'll be back more on Herd Out Sports Radio. <laughs> Ooh. Wrapping up hour number one here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, that's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're on the Pillar Exterior Stage. I should probably set up the show. This is fantastic. Point. I love doing that. Like, if nothing else, you may not get a lot of hot sports takes, but you'll get some hot sports takes. And you, I mean, we'll figure out life through sports. Yeah, that's kind of what we do yeah, here. Kind of nutty, man. Uh, <laughs> So my brother, Ra- Ra- my Ra- brother Ra- Ra- Ravi here for Greg Doyle. My bro- <laughs> oh, we'll get to Greg Doyle. Uh, my brother texts me during the break. He goes, you know, I just want you to know that I switched from watching on Facebook to watching on YouTube just so we could comment about the poop machines. Uh, but I really wanted to be like, I know you just turned 40, but how old are you that you're watching on Facebook? <laughs> just kidding. Not hating on anybody that watches on our Facebook. We love you. You're the best. Ooh, my you're best. definitely under My 60. mom probably just logged off. Oh, come on. <laughs> Mama Benning, you wouldn't do that to me. I got the nicest birthday message from Robbie and Shane. <laughs> like, Who cares? <laughs> See, I do like people. You, know, just, you don't even know. Uh, coming up on the show today, because uh, we're about an hour in already, so we should probably do this. Robin Washit from Husker Online is going to come talk to us. A little Husker basketball. Got yeah. some transfers coming in. I wanted to choke you over that whole conversation yesterday, but I'm going to leave it sit. <laughs> we can, glad, we, glad we're talking to Robin at 8. We can get into it later. All right. 845, we've got Brian Edwards, our Vegas insider. Nine. Using the cream cheese to butter the bagel. We got the Budweiser. Uh, nine, we've got Michael Bruns from Husker 24 7. We can double dip with both guys, too. Yeah, we'll do a little. A little, little baseball football. A little baseball football. A little basketball. And a little, bas- and a little basketball Sprinkle football. It in. Because there were some live periods on Tuesday. Yeah, there were. 
there were some live periods on Tuesday. We can talk about it. Yeah, by the way, I may need you to give me Tuesday morning off, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, cool. Uh, then we'll talk to Dan Rosen from NHL.com at 945. Well, DB, well, I'm going to take off early. To, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Man. <laughs> it's the most research I've had to do for an interview in years. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to ask some questions? No, yeah, just, that'd be great. Just text him to me so I look like All, I you, all you're going to do is ask your brother. I'm going to like, hey, Justin, uh, feed me some questions. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah. wait a minute. He's a Lightning fan? Yeah, he's a Tampa Bay fan. That's so cool, right? you'd be like, why is Shane asking all these Tampa Bay questions? I just, wondered, I just wondered how you knew about Kucherov so fast. I get the I get the McKinnon and that deal, but he rattled off. He did. Three of the top five like that. Boom. It's because he was having a conversation. He's like, oh, we just had this conversation weekend. in the car. Yeah. Uh, all right, Shane, my little sports aficionado. <laughs> yeah, just come to me with all your Tampa Bay questions. <laughs> yep. uh, all, oh, any hockey takes, get my man. Big Kucherov guy. He is. Um, <laughs> so we were talking earlier in between yelling Huge. at each other. About I, 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 that's stammers. not my style. You good over there? Are you, you got like a little like hockey Tourette's thing going on? What's happening? Wow. You I'm just, just, I'm just, I'm boning up for this interview here. Just, Shane just, Gilmore, just Happy Schillerberg. I'm boning up for this. Did you just hit him with hockey Tourette's? I just like shouting out <laughs> names randomly. I, I don't know what else. Is it like a tick? You good? <laughs> You're such a nice person. I'm lovely to be around. What's that? Um, <laughs> That's not true. It's actually funny for people that don't know me. Oh um, wow, it's really amusing. Uh, it's anyway, about the sixth day in a row I've I've had tears. Well, that's what we do here. We're just here to have a good time. We're just here to have fun. Um, wow. Apparently, I I don't know what what Greg Doyle was trying to do yesterday. I don't know if he was trying to have fun or if he was just being Did weird. Did we get the audio, Shane? We don't have that, do we? Do we? Do we have the? I don't have the audio. So I mean, it, it, was, it was just an awkward. Well, and the audio only tells half the story anyway because it oh, starts off you with need a her, hand gesture. Yeah, you need, and you need her look at him. Yeah, because you. So it was so good. Well, I'll let you set it. But when her her first response, I knew exactly what he did. Yeah, she did a good job of of answering. I knew exactly what he did, even though the initial question was awkward. Like he does that. So apparent Caitlin Clark, which I had forgotten, she even does this. Kaylin Clark does this hand heart thing. If you're if you're watching the stream, she does this to her parents after every game, um, just to kind of acknowledge them, whatever, right? And so, Greg Doyle does that to Kaylin Clark at her introductory press conference for the Indiana Fever, where obviously she was the number one pick, and Greg Doyle works for the Indy Star after being a national columnist for a while, and he he basically goes, or, or she goes, hey, you like that. And he goes, I like that you're here, which was kind of a weird thing. But I think I knew what he meant. Like, hey, I'm glad you're in Indiana. I'm glad that we have, you know, this this superstar in our midst. Yeah. And then she pivots because that was kind of an awkward, like there wasn't really a question there. And so, well, she it, pivots it, and goes, okay, yeah, yeah, I do that to my I, I do that to my parents after every game. Um, And he goes, hey, you'd start doing that to me. And we'll get along just fine. Mm -hmm. And then she just gives him this look like what in God's name led you to say something like that. And again, I don't think it was malicious. He ends up apologizing on Twitter or X or whatever. I think it was incredibly awkward and pretty toned. Like, I don't even, I don't even understand what he was trying to get out of that interaction. You know, it, it's kind of, it's the issue I have sometimes when, when people say something and then they apologize. And I was like, well, what were you trying to do there? Mm. Right? This is, I mean, I try not to bring this up because I, I feel like we're a little on a little better terms now after he came on the show. But like when, when Greg McDermott had the plantation comment, right? One of the things I was trying to figure out was like, what were you trying to say? If that's not what you meant to say, which is fine, I'll believe that. Like, what were you trying to say? Like, I don't, that's where I, I'm like, because usually there's some thought process before words just start flowing out of people's mouths. I know you probably don't believe that here in me every morning, but usually there is a thought process. And so when, when Greg Doyle goes, says what he says, like, oh, he started doing it to me. We'll get along just fine. I'm just like, what, like, what was that interaction supposed to be? Yeah. Uh, and that would probably be the hardest part for him to explain. Yeah. I mean, because if it wasn't malicious, 
I mean, if it wasn't malicious, it's pretty easy to explain, right? Like, hey, this is what I meant. It came out weirdly. I apologize. If it wasn't, like, creepy. Yes. Not malicious. Sure. Fair. That's a fair distinction. But if it was creepy, then it becomes hard to explain. If it wasn't intended to be creepy, actually really easy to explain, I think. Like, again, I'll I'll use Coach McDermott for an example. If he was going to say something, a very common phrase that we've all heard, hey, I need you guys to not leave the reservation or stay on the reservation or whatever, right? That's a common phrase. And he realized in the midst of it, it's like, ah, that might be an insensitive thing to say. Probably shouldn't say that anymore. And his brain started searching for something. He came up with something that was worse, right? That's a reasonable explanation. I can live with that. I'm okay with that. But then if it's, and that's an easy explanation, if it's not supposed to be malicious. If Greg Doyle is not trying to be creepy there, it's a really easy explanation to just say, hey, this is what I was trying to do. And that's not what I meant, how for how I meant for it to come off, right? But if it is creepy, that's where it becomes hard to explain. So, uh, and this, and I, 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 I totally um, understand the the awkwardness of what he did and the delivery. Mm-hmm. And are are we okay, or do we just kind of wrong is wrong because we we get into these things in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, where we're 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 put off by everything that somebody says, and we got into this whole cancel culture and this, that, and the other. Is this something that is as e- easily distinguishable? Where it, the wrath that it is drawing currently is earned, or where do we draw the line if we're overreacting to something or not? Mm, I mean, that's a fair question. I I do think we tend to overreact, and I don't. At this point, because I haven't, he doesn't have a history of being like this. He's got a history of being maybe a little pretentious or whatever. If you want to get to like the Danny Hurley, Matt Painter thing, or if you want to, like, he's got a history of being a little strange. But I don't, from what I know, at least. He he definitely, and a guy that I know pretty well, like, we'll we'll stop and. Yeah. We had Big Ten Media Days. We, we, yeah. We we talk. Shane, play the audio real quick. See if we can get good, good audio on this. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, I'll read you this. You like, you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, Very let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is. Yeah, like, I, I don't I don't know what he was trying to do there. Okay. I'm just. But go ahead. Yeah. So no pre like let's just say I you just dropped me in from Pluto. Sometimes yeah. that's where people think I'm from. Do you know what I do you know what I originally thought he meant what? until I looked at her expression? And and maybe I, I let that sway me. Because we can't see his face. I, I let that sway me. Yeah. I thought maybe he was saying at me doing my job. Like if you think of me like that doing my job, we'll get along just fine. Mm, I think that's given him a lot of benefit of the doubt, which is but not that's not even a str- unfair. That's not even like no, I not. don't even have to get loose to to no, stretch. That's, that's like fair. that's what that's what I originally thought. I, I God is my witness. Yeah, like hey, you show me a little bit love, we'll get along just fine. Yes, like my job, like yeah, my job, like, like pl- uh, platonically, but like yeah, like hey, you show if me this a is bit how love, you think I'm doing my job, I'll show you a little bit of love, yeah. we'll be good. That's what I thought, and that's fair. That's a plausible explanation, and I don't have anything to say. Uh, I don't is have that- any. 888-6384. Am I crazy? No, well, I don't think well, so. Well, Lord knows we don't need the phone call because our YouTube stream is could nuts. Could he have been trying to do something funny there just based on play, that? Play, 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 she, it, she, play it again, Shane. Because she was on SNL like the week before. And I she mean, was sensational. But she was. And he does laugh when he says the comment. So I think he was trying to make a joke. I think what happened, this is what I think happened. I think he did this thing, the, the heart hands thing, didn't know how to get out of it to get into his question made a bad joke to try and move on. Yeah. Shane, play it That's again. That's how I took it. See if we can blank slate. Clear your mind. Okay. Clear your mind. Hi. Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, I'll read you this. You like, you like that? I like that you're here. I like uh, that you're here. I'd... Shane, you didn't play the whole clip. Oh, we got to go. We're out of time. The fact that he changed his tone there, mm-hmm. I like that you're here. I think that's what set people up for whatever he was going to say next. That was a, that was as weird as the last thing. It was, for me, Yeah, it was more awkward fair. than his reply. Totally fair. 
and maybe he didn't expect her to say Because I don't think his reply meant what we thought it was without him going, I like that you're here. Like, sure. It was just kind of. The whole thing was super awkward. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We've got Robin Washit coming up next here on Herd at Sports Radio. Kicking off hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula. And I want to remind you to go to supernovas.com to make sure you get tickets for this Saturday, April 20th, 6 p.m. First serve uh, right here at the CHI Health Center. You can check out the schedule. It's one of just three remaining home matches for the Supernovas. You can also do a little shopping on the website as well. Go hit up supernovas.com to get tickets and to get more information about Omaha's pro volleyball team. Joining us now is another pro. Robin Washett from Husker Online. Robin, how are you this morning? Doing well. How are you guys? Robin, how are you? I haven't talked to you forever. How, how are things? <laughs> we're, we're, we're going all right. You know, we're, uh, we're wrapping up spring ball. The portal is in full effect. So uh, not a dull moment around here. <laughs> the, the rye chuckle gives me the chills as if to say, <laughs> this dude is a dig dong. Why did he say that? <laughs> Every it's, every day's a new adventure. You're like, yeah, you just never know what you're gonna get when I talk to old DB. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just I just like to make our guests comfortable. Um, <laughs> where do you want to start? You want you want to go hoops, or do you want to talk open open portions of practice? Where would Robin like to start? Um, I'd probably have more uh, tangible takeaways from basketball than i do okay. with uh, the the 40 minutes of individual drills we've watched with per spring football so per perfect let me ask you a hard-hitting question will nebraska <laughs> use all four remaining scholarships no um <laughs> i am kind of curious about that though yeah um what what do you think they do with open slots because they could maybe fill two more they don't have to fill them all do you think they bank them or how do you think the roster fills out up up until these four spots currently? I mean, I think there's always a – if the right player comes at the right time and it just kind of makes sense, and then sure, you go ahead and fill it. But, like, any more, I just don't – personally, I don't see the value of having 13 scholarship players. Like, for one, you're just spending your time babysitting somebody that's probably going to get mad because they're not playing, and then you have to deal with their – parents or coaches or whatever it may be that are like mad at you because their kids aren't playing and uh it just becomes kind of this unnecessary chore that you have to deal with and then seven months later they're leaving the program anyway so like anymore like i think that you have you know your um probably nine or ten like kind of core scholarship guys uh that, that you build around and if you can supplement that with another player or two then so be it but I almost see more value in having, um, you know, additional spot for um, just just to have, you know, in, in case, you know, something comes up at, at mid-year or um, even into the next recruiting class. But then also just kind of take that, that burden off your, your plate as a coaching staff of um, trying to keep 13 guys happy in an era where that's an impossible thing to do. Robin, do you think there is any value to maybe using one or two of those spots as, uh, I don't know if flyer is the right term, but sort of developmental projects where you're like, yeah, I'm not really sure if this guy can play at this level, but I kind of like the frame and think there's something there. Like, let's see. And that way you're not necessarily babysitting somebody with expectations to play mm -hmm. right away. Yeah. And I think that's what they did last year with like Matar Chope and sure. gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, you know, they, they took a, a kind of a developmental freshman guy and, you know, like a, like an Eli Rice and he even played. Now he's gone. And so like, if anything, maybe hold on to those spots and, and give a scholarship to a guy like Sam Hoiberg or Cale Jacobson or, you know, somebody that's an important member of your program, you know, especially with a guy like Sam, he's a no brainer, but like with somebody like Cale, like, you know, he's not going to play a whole lot, but like he's a, he's an important part of just the, the, the practice and what he provides to you on the scout team, but then also just from a culture standpoint, um, you know, where he's buying into everything that you're doing. And again, he's a, completely maintenance free type player right? why not reward a guy like that if you have the opportunity to do so so again it, it's all year to year player to player like there's going to be situations where it makes sense to fill all 13 but i just think with the way that roster management is quickly heading in college basketball i remember back when tim miles was here he was uh, a, 
a proponent to reducing scholarship numbers and, and having it take down to 10 just because of that same issue. And that was even before the, the portal and NIL. So um, any, any more, I just, uh, I'm kind of more and more in that boat where it just seems like a, an unnecessary task to, to fill all 13 um, in an era where just keeping guys for multiple years is, is harder than it's ever been. So Robin, let me ask you something based on, it's not even so much about what's available versus what's needed. He got a lot of by he, I mean, coach Weber got a lot of credit for the, the meshing of the pieces when he brought portal guys in and how the personalities allowed him to really flourish as a coach. Has he, has he done it enough where we don't look at talent so much as fit, or is this still a deal where, all right, we've got a, a year and a half of you trending in the right, deal let's see if you can still build on before we anoint yep i trust the fact you know what you're looking for in the portal now when it comes to fit right i think he has built some equity there um, with what what he's done the last two uh recruiting cycles but i think that the goal is it's not just getting good dudes and and high character players like you got to elevate your talent and so that's kind of the the balance there where um, you, know, you want to continue that method of, of bringing in guys that, that fit the culture you've tried to build over the last two off seasons while also upgrading the level of talent on your roster. So, um, you know, with the, the guys they've brought in so far, you know, I, I think that it's, you know, that they all kind of fit their respective roles and they certainly check all the boxes that they're looking for is continuing um, this kind of culture rebuild. But I think that, um, you know, the, the, the goal is to, is to make sure that the guys that they're bringing in are better than the ones that either they lost or, um, you know, the, the, the ones that, uh, you know, they're going to be playing alongside again. So that's, it's still, still a process. I think they're going to try to look for some more, um, you know, dynamic, you know, day one starter level players, um, that, uh, you know, that they, they can continue that, that, like I said, that correlating path of, continuing what you've done while also making sure you're getting better players. And I think when, when you win, I mean, you can find really good dudes that are also really good players that uh, is going to try to continue that trend in the right direction. Robin, out of the three guys that have committed so far, Griffiths, Worcester, uh, and Morgan, who do you, I, I guess, who do you think makes or has the best fit in terms of what Nebraska needed? Well, how much of it has to d depend on mass health too if in fact sure. he does yeah. have surgery yeah. yeah so that's that's kind of the big question mark right now which we don't know at, at this point i'm expecting rink to be back but again that's that's just part of the equation here like he, he can come back but you know how if he requires surgery how long is he going that recovery going to take and what type of player is he going to be next season coming off that surgery is he going to miss time and, and if so how much time so um, there's there's a lot of layers there, which which makes a guy like Andrew Morgan really important because those two have very similar skill sets um, mm -hmm. offensively. Now Morgan's not the shooter rink is, but he uh, is is really good with the ball. Um, you know he's a good passer. Uh, he's he's kind of just one of those smart players that can be the facilitator out of the post the way Rink was. So um, you know, that like just just having two of those guys is a, a really good luxury, but in the potential that you might have to play games or, or an extensive part of the season without rink, um, having a guy like Andrew to kind of slide in there and, and fill that role uh, is really important. So, I mean, that, that was a, a pretty critical addition, just, you know, especially because of the unknowns around rink right now. But then, you know, they also lost their two best three point shooters and probably maybe three of their best three point shooters with the add in to Marcus Lawrence. So they, they needed perimeter shooting and, while Gavin Griffiths didn't shoot well really at all last season at Rutgers, uh, he was a top 50 recruit for reasons and regarded as one of the better three-point shooters in the 23 class and kind of towards the end of last year started to find his groove a little bit. So he, he fills that void. And, oh, by the way, he's six foot eight and, and long and kind of does, um, you know, provides those mismatches that, that Fred likes to exploit um, in his system. So, you know, he, he checks a lot of boxes. And then um, with Wooster, he's, a guy that started 101 games under Craig Smith. And if you're the lead point guard for a coach like that, you're going to bring a lot of intangibles to the table. And he's not the shooter that maybe um, some are looking for, but 
I mean, when you when you have that assist to turnover ratio like that, and you're just kind of one of those stable uh, quarterbacks on the court, um, you know, you, there's there's a lot of value in that regard too. That um, you, know, you lose Jamarcus Lawrence, and you know now you can have uh, Bryce Williams play more off the ball, which I think is his kind of plays to his strengths more. And then you pair Wooster and Ulis, suddenly you got a really veteran backcourt. And how do you win in March with talented bigs? and veteran point guards so um, in theory nebraska has now addressed both of those while also adding a, a high level shooter so i i guess that that answers my follow-up to that was because i was going to say hey listen i get lloyd i get you know uh jop i get kata to some degree i definitely get wilcher lawrence surprised me a little so my question was going to be listen with that with lawrence's departure do we assume that ulis is the guy and does Nebraska still need another backcourt mate. They need a score. Um, I think they're okay at point because um, Ulis is certainly going. If he's not a starter, he's going to play extensive minutes off the bench as that that first lead guard off the bench. And you say the same thing with Raleigh. Like whoever starts out of those two, the other one is going to play a lot. Um, so I don't I don't know how much they can play together mm-hmm. just because neither of them are really dynamic shooters or anything like that but you know both of those guys are gonna i think lock down that lead guard role um so what they need now you have bryce williams as kind of your go-to um you know scorer on the wing but they, they need another one you know they, they need more shooting i think when you kind of see some of the names surfacing now you know they were all in on front court guys which they still are but now you're starting to see names pop up with the, just kind of those those go-to case type shooters mm. um that uh is you know they got griffiths but they need more you know like i said they lost three of their best three-point shooters from last year they need more firepower on the perimeter um you know especially you know, going back to the ring conversation if, if that element isn't there so um i would anticipate they're they're going to just get an, an elite level three-point shooter and then they need somebody that along with bryce you can give the ball to when the shot clock's winding down just go make a play and so th- those are two priority spots in the backcourt, I don't think that they're going to need to get another, um, you know, uh, point guard type because they have those two. I mean, Sam Hoiberg can play that role. So, I mean, they've got options there, but they just, they need more shooting and they need more, um, you know, just, just give the ball to a guy and let him go and get a bucket. So, so I don't want to put words in your mouth, but when you say go get a score, is that kind of the same or not the same at all as if I asked you, how are they going to get more athletic on the wing? Cause I still have that AM game in my mind where mm-hmm. it was athletically such a mismatch. It, is that one in the same? Is that in addition to, is that different? Yeah. I mean, you, you <laughs> need to upgrade both. Like okay, uh, a, a six foot 190 pound score is, is only going to take you so far. Like <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. there's certainly a need for that, but he saw that. I mean, if, if Nebraska wants to, to win at this, this next level that um, they came close to, uh, that A&M game this is still uh, very much in the minds of a lot of Nebraska fans, and I'm sure that coaching staff, where they, they realize they, they need to get more athletic. And so, you know, the, the guys they brought in, I don't know if necessarily athleticism is the first thing that comes to mind there. Certainly they all have that to a degree, but like, you know, there was one player on the court last year that looked like he matched up with A&M, and it was Juwan Gary. And beyond that, you know, there, there really wasn't much else. So, like, they, they just need, they need size, they need strength, they need athleticism, both on the wing, and I think they need to add it in the, in the post, too. They, I think that's another priority is, you know, you've got kind of your, your skilled offensive big and Morgan, and you need, you need a kind of an enforcer type, you know, because you, you lost Alec. You need that guy that's going to go uh, clear out the paint, get a defensive rebound, and uh, you know, make people think twice about coming to the rim with, this, with blocking shots. And right now, I, that's that's a pretty big void. So you know, I talk about the scoring needs on the perimeter. They still need some size, physicality in the post that can um, you know help them on both ends of the court against that type of athleticism they saw in the tournament. So, Robin, when when I hear you talk about okay, they need to upgrade their shooting. Um, because obviously they're, they're top three shooters left and the guys that they've got coming back aren't necessarily lighting the world on fire or the guys that they've brought in from the transfer portal. But then you also tell me they need to upgrade their athleticism. That to me sounds concerning because usually the thing that offsets a deficit in athleticism is shooting. Do you have 
to any sort of level of concern that they're not going to be able to find that right match kind of based on what they've constructed so far? Well, and that's kind of the luxury of having four open spots is you can address that in a lot of different ways. Mm, uh, so, I mean, like they can, they can get their spot up shooter while also, you know, getting a, you know, kind of a lockdown perimeter defender. And that that's the other thing with Worcester too. Like, I mean, he's a big boy, like he's six foot four, 200 plus pounds. That um, was arguably Utah's best defender for the last yeah. four years, three years here. So, um, you know, I, I think they, they did address that in some regard, but you know, they, they just need more of it. I think it's, it's more, but it's like, there's a, a void here. I think it's more about supplementing and continuing to upgrade. Cause I, they, the core roster they bring back and plus the guys that they've added so far, you know, I think Nebraska has got, got a pretty good start right now. The issue is they just got to kind of, kind of continue it. So it's, I wouldn't say level of concern, but there's still work to be done to address those remaining needs and looking at the guys that they're in on and, the, you know, I think from a from an NIL standpoint, they're probably as competitive as they've been in a long, long time, maybe ever since kind of the the real start of the NIL era, and that's going to allow them to get their foot in the door with guys that fit that bill of all those different areas they need to address um, in in a way that you know a year ago and certainly two years ago they they probably couldn't even consider, um, you know, just because with the success comes more resources and with more resources, suddenly you're a better recruiter. Uh, dipping and dappening with our man, uh, Robin Washington from on three. So we know what's happening. How about football here, Rob? Okay. You can laugh. That was kind of funny. <laughs> Thank you. Good. So it's okay. Good. I, it's just I, freestyling on us I, over here. Robin. I got, I got it. Robin, this, this, this just in is you've known me for so TV long. Though. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm an odd duck, right? Novel. All right. But let me ask you this, Robin, cause you guys are kind of, you're, you're on, it we know some of the rumor mills with the portal and in Nebraska and some potential secondary targets, which at first blush you're probably thinking secondary. What? Like, aren't we good? It's like, what, what's going on? Um, yeah, I know. right. Number one, it, it, any generalizations we want to make in terms of what that means for current guys on the roster, or do you we just trust implicitly? Hey. They know what they need, and, and and maybe there will be some surprise portal additions or departures. Yeah, I think that there's probably always that potential anymore. Um, I, I think of the guys that, you know, when you look at potential departures, just from the sound of things, I don't know if anybody's expecting any big guys, like any big names to mm-hmm. leave. But again, you, you just never know in, in this era. Like, <laughs> They, there's there's zero surprises anymore in, in our portal world of collegiate athletics. Um, so like you always kind of got to be prepared for that. But like I agree with you. Like secondary, like it seems like the last position they need to address through the porters the portal just because of the bodies they already have there and the talent that they seem to have there. But you know, again, it, you also have to kind of be cognizant that if if you see an opportunity to bring in a good player that you think is better than what you have, you got you got to go do it. Um, just because everybody's on a, a year-to-year deal here. And if you have the opportunity to get somebody that can make your team better and um, you know get, get you to where you need to go, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the cost to doing business. But at the same time, it's, it's got to be the right guy, especially if you're taking him this late. Yeah. Like, you're missing all spring ball. Like, you know, he's got to be somebody that doesn't have a lot of catching up to do. So you know, that's kind of the one caveat when you look at some of the portal names i i just don't know how aggressive nebraska is really going to be you know they might be putting out feelers and you know just kind of checking in on guys in case they have some unexpected departures but i just don't anticipate a lot of like significant movement both with you know big names so to speak leaving and then like high profile additions through the portal post spring i I think they want to try to keep this thing as as close to intact as they can but you also got to make sure that you're prepared in case uh, the unexpected happens uh, for spring ball. I, I told Ravi, I said this tongue in cheek, but now with kind of this stuff, it, it's got me wanting to revisit my own thought, even though it was kind of half wit at the time. I said, this strikes me as the t- this was on the heels of Coach Rule talking about the portal and this, that, and the other. And I said, this strikes me as the type of year with so many guys clumped together, I could see players leaving. Not because of anything monumental, but just because there isn't enough separation, right? People get impatient. So I'd say, 
you know, maybe people would leave, but it's not because of anything earth shattering like this, that, or the other. It's just, listen, man, we have, we're, we're, we're three red shirt juniors or, or, or COVID year sophomores or, because I look at wide receiver, it's clogged like that. I look at defensive mm-hmm. backs, it's clogged like that. You may Shoot just get line, offensive. Too. Oh, I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> Where guys could just say, you know what? Like, there isn't enough space in, but not to go all Dave Matthews, but like space between, right? It's just like, we got to do something different. Yeah, no, I, I do think that. And now with the players having more leverage than they've ever had in the history of college sports. Like, why, why would you blame them? Why would you want to be in a four player committee at your position when you can go somewhere else, make, you know, maybe not as much or at least close to um, the same NIL and have a defined starting role. Like, I mean, that's, that's the opportunities that players have now that, you know, on paper, like you want to treat it like a video game where you have this just like a bunch of depth of, 80 and 90 rated players but like it it, it just doesn't happen anymore like that's that's that's, it's just really hard to do now and so yeah i agree with you that i mean though though if there are kind of unexpected departures that's going to be the type of player that's that's what i think saturated position that you know you're you're disappointed to see him leave but it's going to be one of the it's going to be deals where like you can understand it like yeah. they're going to go somewhere where they can play and and have an opportunity to do what they want to do on the field. If it's it's I and I mean like like even if it's just guys with similar skill sets There's like if, if, like if I'm a slight twitchy wide receiver because it's not just the positions it's like it's the specifics within the position. If I'm a if I'm a you know if I'm a slight DB. And I'm playing for corner. How many other slight DBs are there? Like, I want something in the secondary that's a set apart. If I'm a wide receiver, I want, like, I want to be the six four guy that's what's one ninety. There's only a handful of those, right? So, it could just be like, uh, I just, I don't know if I can distinguish if I'm distinguished enough. And there's nothing right. like that's not an indictment. It just is what it is because Coach Rule said he's letting us know whether you come or whether you go. I think we're going to be okay. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, I, th- I think that that's, that's kind of how you got to approach this. Like guys are, are going to leave, but like, you just got to understand that for one, they're, they're probably leaving for a reason as far as what their role is going to be at Nebraska. And then two, it's kind of got to just understand their situations that, um, especially with not just multiple guys at their position, but what if they're multiple guys in the same class, like you re- that's going to be the same deal for the next two, three, four years where, you know, you're, you're in that kind of same role where there's a group of you all doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And if you want to truly separate, it's, it's going to be really hard to do it in Nebraska. So uh, it's kind of the, the, the world of roster management and basketball and football and, and across the board where, you know, you just got to accept that there's going to be turnover. Um, even if there's guys that you want to keep around, they probably want to stay around. Sometimes it just makes sense to turn the page and, and, and find other opportunities. Mm. That's Robin Wash at Husker Online. Robin, we appreciate your time, and hopefully we will catch up again soon. Thanks, Robin. Absolutely. Good talking to you guys. That's Robin Wash at Husker Online. Really good stuff there. There's a lot in there I want to get to. Yeah. yeah. We got time. Like, like, like that, that right there, and, and we just – I want to buoy that or pit it against Coach Rule saying, you know, kind of his demeanor. Yeah. He gives you the sense that everything's okay regardless similar skill sets how do you separate yourself and remember what i joked about the other day that's now not so funny what's that in passing going into break i go we keep seeing all these videos of guys catching these long passes and running after the catch who's covering these guys (laughs) you remember that yeah (laughs) yeah maybe that's a thing that's a two-way street for sure guys got to get on top of those guys don't they? always the scary thing about scrimmages (laughs) If one thing's good, the other might be bad. <laughs> At CBM, Robin Lula, we'll be back. More Herd at Sports Radio. We're halfway through the show here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That is DB. I'm Ravi Lula, and we are brought to you by our friends at the NDOT Highway Safety Office, reminding you hands on the wheel, eyes and focus straight ahead. The driver has one job to do, that is to drive this message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. I know sometimes that we can be distracting while you're maybe listening to us in the car on AM 590 or ESPN Tri-Cities. Oh, it's entertaining stuff. Keep those eyes on the road. That's all I'm asking. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road.
love our friends over at the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Mm -hmm. um, interesting stuff there from Robin, and, and I, I wanted to jump into the football portion of it because I was going to ask him. We ran out of time, and he, he sort of started to address it a little bit. I'm curious if some of these guys that inevitably you're going to have guys in the portal at the end of spring, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to just from a number standpoint, pretty much. I mean, there's there's only so much room, but I'm curious how fans will perceive that this year versus how they may have in the past, whether it's in year one of rule or the last couple of years of frost, because I get the sense that both because of the things that coach rule says, like, Hey, it's, it's your right to go to the portal if you want, but you know, we, we think the guys that, you know, are need to be here are going to be here. And, and we love the guys that are here. And just the way that the team has improved their depth over the course of this last year, I don't know that there would be the same panic from the fan standpoint that there would have been in previous years, right? Like, let's, I don't know, we were just going through an exercise of going through wide receivers, right? There's a lot of options at that group. Yeah, at first blush, do you remember what you just rattled off? The names? Yeah, and in no particular order. Yes. This is just... I, I like that you did this off air because it gave me a chance to. Um, you, it's like proof of concept in my head. Yeah. Because right? I'm thinking, shoot, if you're looking at potentially, mm -hmm. like, why would national guys be linking a couple guys from either TCU or SMU to, I mean, it's all over Twitter feeds, right? Yeah. Coming to the, visiting Nebraska or Georgia or whatever. And you try not to. You're not pawning that off as fact, but it did get my mind thinking. Sure. So we just started, and that was just DBs. Yeah. And in particular corners, I think at the safety spot, they're going to be pretty good, and they play three of them. Mm -hmm. So you got a little more options. So, yeah. like And a couple guys, are old. Like you have some experienced guys, right? Mm -hmm. like Hartsog and Singleton and Giff, and those guys aren't going to be around forever. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's you light got, at the end of the tunnel. If you're you got to get the guy, you got to get the next, got to get the next group ready, right? And so you get at first blush, you gave me I you get Banks, you gave me Banks, Nayer, yep, Lloyd, yep, Bell, yes, you skipped one, but yeah, uh, oh, in no particular, I'm just yeah. Um, who else did I say? Um, uh, Bullock, ba Bullock, yep. Barney, yep, Doss. No, you did not give me Doss. Okay. You gave me Coleman. Coleman, that's right, Coleman. So you gave me Banks, Nair, Lloyd, Coleman, Bullocks, Bell, Barney. So seven guys. Yeah. And then you added Doss at the end. Yeah. For the eighth guy. Because he played last year. Because he played last year, yeah. Right? And they liked him, and he, he was the guy that, before he got hurt, got a lot of run in terms of, oh, this is a guy that might be good, might be useful for us this year. So right off the bat. It's eight guys. Just, you have eight guys. And we, we've we forgot a couple. Bonner. Oh, yeah, move back to wide receiver. Move back to wide receiver. Okay, I'm going to jot him down. Um, I'm going through the list here. Give, he, give me another. Bullock, Bonner, did Coleman, did Doss. Yep. Uh, IGC. Okay. I don't know what to do with him. Um, I'll assume the best. Okay, I'll give you IGC. I mean, he's, he's there, and, and he's he, played. And he's productive. He's there, and he's he's played, right? Okay, I'll give you that one. Um, I don't think either of the Bellevue West guys are going to impact this year. Uh, that might be mostly it. Okay, uh, so Keelan so, Smith, you don't think impacts this year, probably? Going to be a good player, though, I think. Right, but we've got, you know, yep, a year I'm with probably you. at least. Okay, so uh, just hypothetically. So this, it's nine. So this, ten. Ten? Okay. So this got me thinking. Yeah. Let's say you're uh, – pick one. Let's say you're Jaden Doss. Okay, you're Jaden Doss. Mm -hmm. You played last you year. Played, right? You played a little bit last year. As a true freshman. But then all of a sudden you see – give me two. You Take see, a look at your list. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. You've got uh, Demetrius Bell. Okay. And let's say Barney. Okay. I think probably – I tried to pick guys sort of same body types. You see those guys start to flourish. Yeah. It's not maybe it's not an indictment on yeah, maybe you, you didn't maybe you didn't get worse. Maybe they got better. Maybe those guys just got better and they're off here. Yeah. So you're like, oh poop. We're about the same age. We're kind of the same skill body set. Body type skill set. I may go do something else different because there's not enough separation. Yeah. 
and I played last year, but I may not. I may play less this year. And you're never going to have a guarantee of separation, right? That, that's the real issue, right? No matter. So if those guys, so hypo, this is and this guys you, hypothetical. St- yeah, stay in here. Like don't we're just doing an exercise here because DB is even worse. Yeah, especially at corner. Yeah, um, a lot of a lot of similar guys. It's not an. I don't think it's an indictment. It's just the reality of kind of how people think. Well, let me give you an example here, right? Uh, two years ago, Golden State won the o- offensive line is a is a is a bear too. Yes, like two years, Golden State won the NBA title, right? Mm-hmm. They're not appreciably worse than they were then. Everybody else got a lot better. Now they're a little worse, right? So maybe it's not a perfect example, but they went from NBA champion to ten seed in two years, mostly because everybody else got a lot better, right? Denver got better. OKC got better. Minnesota got better. That's three right ahead of you right there. Boom. Without even uh, the Clippers, if you're healthy. You're hey, and for the majority of the year until this last quarter tailspin, Sacramento got better. Sacramento got better, right? Like you have a and bunch. they just of, beat their head in. The Lakers got better from last year to this year, I think. I think they're better than they were last year. I thought they're, they're supporting staff. Like, so you can be basically the same and end up in a worse spot, right? That's what we're talking about with possibly in the wide receiver room in the offensive line room, in, I mean, we talked about this last year with with Ben Scott, right? You f- firmly believe, and I have no reason to doubt you, that there was a chance he wouldn't have started last year because Justin Evans was so good. Yeah, at this point last year, I'd have been like, I don't know. And Justin Evans is younger, theoretically, is improving at a faster rate than Ben Scott is. That's generally how aging and maturing goes, right? So you'd be, sh- would you be shocked if a guy like Ben Scott, again, hypothetical, got passed? Like, that's not shocking. No, I, I hear you. I you know like, what I mean? Yeah, I like that. It's, and I think it sounds Or too. Turner Corcoran. Oh, good one. Guy that's played a ton. Good one. Really talented, but has been banged up, probably not improving much anymore. And I've got and a, hasn't had the opportunity, right? Being right. In a, being in a green jersey. Yes, haven't and had that. Other, the, and other, and young other guys, guys are coming. Are playing, yeah. Other guys are coming. They've got a lot of guys that they like. You got a lot of young guys that have been getting a lot better. Like that's a guy that okay, maybe that maybe if he ends up in a transfer portal, that's not an indictment. Like I just told you on a humbug, right? You said, ah, man, who flashes? I said, no, Ramir Stewart. And immediately people are like, who? Yeah, right. Like, like gotta go find him on the roster. So then people will immediately, and I I got this in my on my in my DMs. Well, what about Kobe Bretts? Listen, because I'm saying, and Bretts is my guy. Yeah. Right, because you single somebody out doesn't mean you're. It's an indictment of everybody else. Yeah, so because because I asked the question, the question you posed to me, me was a guy. Yeah, that was different. Or how did you say that? Because uh, this was different you, than think, the guy that. Yeah, I think I, I asked you as meeting my. Is yeah. different than my okay. I think this was the guy that surprised you. Yeah, is how I asked it. I, I saw R- Ramirez Stewart made a couple tackles at the line of scrimmage. Where I was like, mm, that dog will hunt. Yeah. Whereas right. like Kobe Bretts, you know a lot better, probably not surprising you. Yeah, much. so I, so context does matter. Because you could get, like, just look at the cornerbacks. The defensive you, backs are, are it's a crazy. And, it, and again, I don't, and it's and it's not just, it's, they're, they're different, right? Like, like Gifford has a different role than, like, let's say Hartzog. But, yeah, so when I think field safety versus, box support like there's just there's different roles for those safeties mm-hmm. right like you you're gonna play singleton gif and, and Hartzog at the same time yeah okay and, and they all kind of have different skill sets they all have their yeah so you yeah. can go you, you got the rangy really good athlete you, you got can the, go you six, got the box guy yeah, you, you can got, go six deep you there. got the hybrid guy you can go six deep at that spot because and you'll probably have all six of those guys play because it's different skill sets now i don't think the two corners and the nickel guy is the same no Right, because right? you you need numbers there, yeah, and you need quality numbers because they'll find you. They got thirty defensive backs currently on the roster. Yeah. Thirty, that's a lot. It is. Now I, some of those are walk on, some of those are guys that are probably special teams guys, but no. you're probably talking about twenty legitimate options. Yeah, I, I could just that defensive back, and we'll get to why we won't panic either, and it's based on what you talked about the other day of what Coach Rule said. We've got Brian Edwards, Vegas Insider, coming up next. Wrapping up hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio and 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula. We're live here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. And we are joined 
now by Brian Edwards, our Vegas insider. B, what's going on? Good morning, gentlemen. What's happening? How's that fiber? How are those fiber optics treating you, B? Uh, my the, it, my internet, that is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm vying for uncle of the week honors. I've been in Tallahassee watching my nephew's baseball games the last two nights. So I'm at my mom's place. So you guys tell me if my. I, I love the I love the fact you're so close. with. That's cool. You man. look crystal like, clear. The, the, the image looks great. All right, good. I've got the sun. Uh, one of the blinds does not work, and the sun is beaming. Right, in I, I, you're I, in I, your favorite place in the world, though, Tallahassee, right? Listen, not, not so much. <laughs> funny. The, the Gator having to converse with the the Seminole over here, like, is is pure classic. Right. So my family, or my mom, lives in uh, Quincy, like twenty miles away from Tallahassee, and my sister lives in Tallahassee. So that's I've been in Tallahassee going to the baseball so games. But Florida State, my, it's a family affair. No, my family is fortunately <laughs> twenty miles away from campus. Hey, so. You know, my my fourteen year old is a is a big UFC guy, Brian. And we were talking Sunday morning after that stretch, and I said it was one of those weird things with like such a stacked card. He was the most disappointed in Oliveira because I, I think he he gravitates towards people that seem less sane than not. Uh, so he's an <laughs> Oliveira guy. But with the last three matches, they progressively got worse, right? You know, Gaethje and and Holloway is going to be an all timer. I thought Jan and 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 Wei Li was was unbelievable. Her tough Jan's toughness was unbelievable after she was almost sleep in the first round. And then, you know, the capper was a snoozer. And I was like, it was still a fantastic car, but they progressively got worse of the last three fights. It did, but I thought the you know the early end uh, and. The early prelims is what they call them, and then the regular. And you got those on the four. You got those on the network. You got those for free. Yeah, I mean, I thought those were great, but yeah, you're right about the the main card. But like, it was one of those cards where I just felt like, I mean, the early and the regular prelims, I was looking forward to just as much. I mean, with except, I mean, Holloway Gaethje was the people's main event, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I mean, Yuri, how about the comeback by Prohaska? I know. Tough. And, that, and that was huge for him because a loss there would have been would have been bad uh, in terms of his in the title picture anytime soon. When when you when you, when you <laughs> I, I just want no, to go ahead. So with the with the Gaethje Holloway thing, I I and you asked me and I told you I said it's probably it's top ten fights, I think, but it's definitely top five. Finishes. finishes yeah um because there's so many great fights and we've seen some electric finishes too but sure. given what was at stake and where gaith g is in his career you think holloway kind of settles in at 55 he looked you like know, he looked like a new man he did and i mean i think often i think you do whatever you want with him i mean i think he was so great that obviously he can get um Tapuria, if he wants him at 145. Well, he but, called him out. He called him out, didn't he? And Tapuria didn't take the bait. He just was like, gave you the little boxing reps. Like, hey, hey. right, right. And, um, but then again, I mean, you can do him and, uh, uh, challenge anybody from any division for a BMF. I mean, I'm hopefully 155 or 145. Or, I mean, if, if Poye were to get hurt, you know, ahead of the fight with Islam. I mean, Holloway, we want to take it on short notice. I mean, in, in other words, he's, he could work, he could do all kinds of different things right now. Hmm. Uh, Good spot to be in. This, yeah. might, this might be a dumb question, but as you're talking about weight classes there, and I'm much more familiar with boxing than I am UFC, I know that UFC and Dana kind of, you know, plays matchmaker to, to make these fights, but do they control where guys go weight class, or do they have a little more autonomy there when it comes to where, like, what division they want to fight in? Well, Dana always tells them what he'd like for them to do, but yeah. I mean, okay. when it comes to weight, you know, I mean, if somebody can't make a weight, I mean, yeah, sure, they'll, they'll so do it. Now, he doesn't really dictate the way, or he just kind of well, strongly what suggests. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> like, I remember Gastelum. When somebody misses weight like more than once, like he'll say, "All right, Gastelum, you're middleweight now. You're not fighting 170 anymore, mm, or, okay. or different situations like that." Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Um, thank you for educating me. Uh, the want to switch over to NBA here because we've got some NBA playoff action going on. We get a rematch tonight, or on Friday night, excuse me, Bulls Heat of what we saw last night. 
Um, how much do you kind of take into play what you saw when you play teams back to back like this in the early play ins? Does it give you uh, any indication or you kind of have to trust on the more long term data? Well, I'm not going to go with a side. I'm going to go with a total. And by the way, I got on the ESPN app that uh, Jimmy Butler is definitely out. And in fact, for a couple it, it weeks, is it is the MCL. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For a couple of weeks. So basically he's done. Um, so anyway, I, I don't think he impacts the total a whole lot because he's elite defensively and offensively. So in my opinion, it's kind of a wash. Mm. So uh, the over is cashed in five straight uh, for the Bulls. And this is such a low total, either 207 and a half or 208. Uh, 71 of Chicago's 83 games have had at least 210. Now, Miami's normally an under team, but the over is currently on a 10 and 1 run uh, for the Heat. And the three uh, combined scores when these teams met this year were 234, 240, and 218. Now, I know the playoffs is a different animal, especially towards totals, but. I mean, everything is it was such a low number. Everything's saying over to me. So I'm going to go over 207 and a half or 208 Bulls heat. So it, this one's interesting because they would be the ultimate light switch team if, in fact, they can pull this off because they're stars. And who knows what's going to happen with Kalai haven't been intact for a minute, man. Well, how are you capping the Clippers? Man, so I – it's either fade or pass on the Clippers until, especially with Kawhi's uh, status. Like, what do y'all y'all think he's going to play in Game One? I mean, I don't. I don't. I basically I, I, never think he's going to play. So right, right, especially this time of year <laughs> since he got to the Clippers. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, I don't think he's going to play in Game One. And Dallas is just rolling right now. Um, I know Dallas they lost is playing their, so good right now. Yeah, I mean, I know they lost their last two. They're trying. He's this is again much like the Seminoles. He was a he was an avid supporter of Luca. Then he hated ISO ball, so he got off. Now that Luca's now playing, playing well, well again, again, so he's back on the Luca hype train. That that's, right. that's what you're hearing over <laughs> this here. This is what I this is how I wanted to see Luca play from the start, and he's finally playing. He's pl finally playing pretty basketball instead of that James Harden crap. <laughs> yeah, so, right. So, yes, yes. I like that. Oh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> so, I like that a lot. So, uh, Dallas has won 16 of 18, at least until their last two regular season games. I know they sat everybody the last one. I think they did it at home against Detroit as well. So, 16 and four last 20. But when they were trying, 16 and two. Clippers struggling down the stretch. I don't think Kawhi is playing. And they just seem to be a mess the last uh, several weeks, if not a month. When you're taking, do you have any faith? Do you like OKC? Because I know you like odds. And as a one seed, you can get good numbers on anybody not named the Nuggets. Like, yeah. what are you liking for value? Well, so OKC, they just don't have the playoff experience. But I mean, I'm open-minded toward them. I, in other words, a lot of these series, I kind of want to watch a game and, and kind of start to figure it out, you know? Like, I don't have any, like, strong uh, or, or, you know, not super strong opinions on these first games. Um, I want to see how OKC looks. I mean, we don't even know who they're playing yet. I mean, I'm guessing it's probably going to be Sacramento with Zion out and New Orleans struggling at home. But, I mean, uh, actually, New Orleans is owned – uh, Sacramento, and they played them without Zion uh, once this year, and they beat them 133 to 110 in Sacramento. So that game tomorrow night in New Orleans is a total pass for me. Um, so, yeah, we we don't even know who OKC is playing yet. And, um, you know, that Sacramento team got a lot of I – mean, I know it uh, lost in the first round, but that was seven games of good experience against Golden State last year. Yeah, I, I... – is there anyone in the West that you are even intrigued by outside of outside of Denver? And I guess conversely, is there anybody in the East that you're you're intrigued by outside of Boston? Because I'm looking at these two slates and both sides of the playoffs and I go, feels a lot like we're headed for a collision course here. I mean, I think Philadelphia is probably Boston's. I mean, with the way Milwaukee's a mess and Giannis not being healthy uh, and just Milwaukee just and, being a mess. I mean, Doc. I think, and Doc I think, sucks. right. <laughs> and Doc's pl uh, horrific playoff history. Well said. Um, and in the West, man, I, I think it's got to be Dallas, right? With the way they've played I lately. I think so. They're the right? only team that even like intrigues me at all. 
Yeah, but all that said, it's going to be Boston Denver in the finals. <laughs> but yeah, but yes, I, I think if anybody challenges them, it's Dallas. I mean, maybe OKC because if mean, they're if they're early, if they're ready. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I like I kind of just want to be wait and see with OKC. The I'm talent on that I, I, high, I'm a little high, cu- I'm a little curious, and maybe like you said, the Giannis thing with with Boston. But man, you're just fast forwarding a team that hasn't been clutched to be clutch. Exactly. You um, may not need there to be was there was the nothing finals. I watched with Philly that gave me the inkling. Oh yeah, man, they'll be good over a seven game stretch. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I, I just either. wait for the win to pick up and something to happen to Embiid. He just doesn't look. Doesn't look like he's moving good. Just doesn't look like he's moving well. Right, but maybe that gets better um, as he gets in better condition. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Um, again, Boston, Denver. <laughs> it's probably what it's going to be. Speaking of Denver, real quick, Lakers, Denver, game one. You have a play there? Yep. I will be on the Nuggets minus seven against the Lakers. I know the Lakers are playing good, uh, but Denver has won eight in a row over them and is covered in five straight. That's our guy, Brian Edwards, Vegas Insider, MajorWager.com, Brian Edwards Sports. B, we appreciate it as always. Thanks, fellas. Y'all have a good one. Coming up next, we will have Michael Brunson from Oscar 24-7 here on Herd at Sports Radio. Kicking off hour number three here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're also on KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're here on the Pillar Exterior Stage at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. We are joined now by Michael Brunts of Husker 24-7. Bruncey, what's up, buddy? Not much. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we're doing we're doing well. I you know, so Shane was asked, was telling me we're about to come back and you got you on the phone or whatever. And I was like, nope, not doing the interview. And then it kind of turned into this what could Brunts talk about for 30 minutes by himself? Like what could you monologue on for 25 minutes? Just n- no prompts. Um I could probably go I could go 25 minutes on – I could probably go on Major League Baseball for, for a bit. I could do – I could probably do like – Major League uh, Baseball. Major League Baseball, yeah. I give you, I give you a fifth, I could give you 15 minutes on craft beer probably. Okay. Um, why, does that, I, why does that not surprise me? That's pretty stereotypical, yeah. I think. I mean, you look like a craft beer guy, and I don't even know what that is. Like, But you yeah. look like a guy <laughs> – that would enjoy craft beers. I, I don't. Uh, I don't have a beard though. Like I feel like that. That's true. That would help. Much, much, yeah. Much uh, bread there. I so. think the glasses help, and I think you've. I think you look like you've toured a microbrewery or two. Do, yeah. Do, oh. do you just thumb your nose up at Shafe when he like falls in love all over again with Coors? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can appreciate the Coors. I've got a. I've got a soft spot for bad. Bad. Uh, Bad cheap beer. So oh gosh, that's okay too, but um, gives me the willies. Just like, thinking about it's like me and Creed. Like I know it's bad, but I got a soft spot for yeah. it. That doesn't mean I don't like good music. <laughs> she got a soft spot for had, the bad stuff. Yeah, like when I used to live in California, you used to be able to get Olympia. That it was like the oh, really cheap lager. Oh, gee, yes. <laughs> uh, well, why why didn't you get some hams while you were at it, Runcy? It was hard. It was harder to get out there. But, <laughs> but uh, you could get Olympia, and you could get the Tecate. Oh, there yeah. There you, right. My buddy's from Minnesota, Do and you know he's a big gas grain, stations he's big grain belt guy. Oh, grain belt? Yeah, sure. I, BC, he took me to a Twins game like five or six years ago, and, and the, the grain belt tall boy and a little bit of baseball is all right. <laughs> you live it. So, Tecate, that's like a thing, though, Brunts. Like, it's a lot of places, primarily in gas stations. <laughs> yes. Yeah, gas stations and corner store, yep. and, and the price is always right. <laughs> that but is my, amazing. My thought, I, my guess was that you could have gone twenty five minutes on the Moneyball A's. Uh, I could, I could do that. I could, I could give you, I could give you about twenty five minutes on like mid aughts A's too, which is like post Moneyball, which is even worse. So big, like Jack like, Cust guy. Yeah, like Jack Cust. Um, that, that that was in the Sheets era uh, when when he was the big signing for a year. Kevin Kuzminoff. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, oh, Kuz. <laughs> there, there was a guy that a guy that used to walk around the Coliseum. See, I'm going to give you 25 minutes here. I love it. Would would used would used to walk around whenever they signed Kuzminoff, dressed as like an astronaut, but he was a Kuzminoff. So, <laughs> OMG. It was. 
<laughs> the coos didn't last long in Oakland, but it was it was a fun ride while he was there. Here I was thinking we were going to talk about an estuary that doesn't have anything to do with <laughs> forming rivers or anything. <laughs> He, he's like the he's like the most fun player that just is never going to put it together. That's my word. <laughs> well, I I think Bel- Brunts will fight you over that because he's got a Buxton over there in Minnesota that's that's fun for about oh. seven eight games at a time and ugh, not sure he's ever going to put it together either. I mean, he's like ten years in, he's not putting it together. Like that's. Did you see the video where he almost got run over in Milwaukee by the stop? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh it's been, yeah. Like the most Buxton way to get injured. <laughs> It's funny you said that because when Brunty brought it up a couple weeks ago, I said, "Is there anything more that says Byron Buxton than that?" Getting yeah. run over by a he, mascot. No, sausage. he just would like randomly <laughs> slam into walls, and it's just yep. like, "Did you listen, bud? You you know the dimensions. Like you're out of real estate. There's a warning track. What do you yeah. do? You not feel the change in surface? You you can like." In that video, you could see the kill boss that is kind of bearing down on him. And, like, it, it was, it, you could just see like a 10 day stay on the DL coming, but he got out of the way. <laughs> so that was good. Uh, all right, MB. The, the, the question of the, uh, the question of the week, which you know has Caleb Clark in it. But, <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I, I assume that you'd be asking about it now. Be, because, after do you know why, though? It's, he's the only, he's the only one of him really on that roster. So it would be nice if, like if he was good and more than you know what I mean. So I want him to. I want him to assume the role. Now, having said that, can I take the good with the bad? Right, you got the good clean innings from him early, but now the bullpen is rearing its ugly head from it from well over the last eight nine games. How much of the early part of the bullpen was fool's gold versus what it is now? And can they build off what Clark did the other night? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I mean, and, it, and it's scary how much of it was like the calendar flipped to April, and then it was like everybody kind of forgot how to throw strikes. Like it, it, it's uh, almost almost like it, it's just got, kind of bit everybody now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I wouldn't say it was fool's gold from okay. what they what they did for the first two months, but I mean, it definitely, you know, you're, you're not able to really count on, you know, one guy that you could kind of go to right now in a pinch, you know, the, the closest the, that uh, I would say that's kind of been that guy, Jalen Worsley, he's been really good, um, you know, over the last, over that kind of that stretch where the rest of the bullpen's taken a dive. But I mean, it's, you know, you look at the way that, um, you know, they've lost games on this little stretch here and it's, you know, walking guys in late innings and even Perry the other night, um, you know, he got the one, two on both of those guys and, and just didn't have the stuff to put them away uh, for, for the first two batters. So they, they got to figure that out a little bit. And I don't know if you, you know, maybe think of bringing in a different guy in the ninth or kind of reshaping, you know, who you, you have out there. But I mean, to your initial question about Clark, if he can be a, a lefty out of the pen that gives you, let's say, two or three innings if you need it. Yeah. I mean, three is probably asking a lot, but if you could get two, um, that potentially saves you from having to use Walsh on the weekend, but maybe he becomes your midweek guy. So um, there's kind of that, that push and pull right now of how you're going to use guys. But, yeah, I mean, if, if they could get him consistent and able to get out on, on the weekend, I mean, that would be huge because they, they don't have a ton – um, from the left side that's not Perry or Worthley right now. Runs, what's your level of concern on Perry moving forward? Like, how, how much would you be able to trust him after a couple of the outings that we've seen? Yeah, I mean, I, guys are going to have those kinds of outings. And like I said, you know, I, the, the one the other night against Creighton, I mean, he was throwing strikes. Um, you know, he just wasn't able to kind of get the outs. I mean, the one of the guys hit one through the shift and the, the other guy, I mean, you just kind of tip your cap to it. It was, it was a nice, nice two strike hit. So I, he, he's going to continue to be there. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the thing that they've liked the most about him in the late innings is he just has confidence. And, you know, I, I think right now for a, a team that's kind of struggling, I mean, you need, need that, that kind of guy to, to perform well. So, um, you know, I think they're going to keep going to him. Um, but like I said, I mean, I, I don't know if maybe you look at, at, at Dice 
uh, as your ninth inning guy. I, he looked he looked good the other night. It, he has, um, and and so I don't know. I mean, maybe you kind of look at that, and it's, and that's the thing. I mean, they, they've had a pretty democratic approach to that closing role, and I don't know if maybe you you kind of you know hone in on one guy to be your ninth inning guy a little more than what they what they've done to this point. Let me ask you something, Brunson, and, and this is why I love this is why it's my favorite sport because I I do think it is the most difficult of the true skilled team sports. But um, I, I told Ravi, I, I'm kind of over the narrative of, you know, it means more to Creighton and this, that, and the other. I just think, you know, Creighton has been better than Nebraska. Nebraska has not been good in midweek games to begin with. It's You double down when you see good teams like Creighton midweek, and, and that's a recipe for what we're getting. But if – Bolt got the scenario, hey, you're going to be up a few runs heading into the ninth in a low, grimy game. He wants to play like that. How, or I think he would sign up for that. How much of you're looking at five out of six, and you're like, ah, oh, man, this sucks. But if, and it's baseball, I get it, but if Nebraska could just be better situationally, right? Like, like understanding a 2 0 count or, a, a clutch hit when you got a guy on second with or moving a guy over with with less than an out or it just seems like the little bugaboo things have spiraled into this five out of six thing. Is that an excuse or is that just baseball? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it. it Do you I get that sense? Somewhat, no, I, I, I know what you're saying. I mean, I, I think I, anecdotally. I think they've been better situationally this year at the plate than what they were last year. Like last year, it felt like they struck out too much. They really failed to move guys. And I think they've been better at it this year. Um, you know, I think they're able to manufacture runs a little bit more. But, I mean, the other night, you know, the wind is just howling out. And, you know, it was just a lot of – weak contact mm-hmm. I was really kind of surprised I mean he just had to basically get a ball up into the air and it's probably going to go out well we, we we saw it doom them right yeah right and, and you know so I, I think that you know that that's the unfortunate part of it is sometimes the approach um you know at the plate hasn't been what it needed to be and you know I, I don't know I mean I, I think I, I think you know on this recent kind of stretch I mean they they you know blew the lead on Friday against Rutgers they had the lead against Creighton. I mean, I, I think it's, I, I, I kind of tend to say it's a little bit more of, you know, those lulls you go through during the course of the year. Mm. It, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate, you know, timing wise for Nebraska that that lull came right on the back end of being in the host conversation and all of a sudden being ranked. So, you know, right now it just, it feels like a team that just needs something good to happen. And I feel like that was probably the most crushing part of that loss the other night was like, you know, you, you got a chance to to win what was a pretty kind of grimy, tough uh, midweek game. You, you got good performances on the mound from guys that hadn't been very good recently, um, and, and that was a positive, and uh, you weren't able to close the deal. So, um, you know, this is going to be a really important weekend series against Maryland, who's a good team that's kind of in the same spot as Nebraska, where, like, you know, they, they played well, but maybe the some of the um, – the, the results haven't maybe, you know, added up with everything. So it is, this is a really important one to kind of get, get things turned around from a mental point of view for this team. And much as it pains me to give you a little credit, I have a great memory. And I remember I tried to convince you that the preseason big 10 rankings were relatively right. And I get, and I use Maryland as an example. And you said, well, three through seven is kind of a crapshoot. I Maryland's replacing a lot not to quote you, but to quote you. <laughs> and Maryland is exactly what you just said. Still got some questions. We thought some things. They just haven't been that team. So I, okay, tip of the cap, Bruncey, you weren't right, go, right. you, you going to take the bait. You, very, very astute. So that's the last nice thing I'll say until you get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, I mean, Iowa too, right? Like Iowa. Oh yeah, and that was my gimme. And you're like, yeah, I don't know what happens after one and two. <laughs> That's like, uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> there's, there's not many Big Ten teams that have the number six, number sixteen prospect in the draft pitching on Sunday. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, they're they're hard to wrap your head around a little bit. <laughs> you feel like they should have a few more dubs? <laughs> what? I detected. Bruns, I'm done. <laughs> 
Uh, Brunts, you just saw that D1 baseball has Nebraska projected as a two seed, but with how they've played so far in the month of April, how tenuous do you think that position is for them, not just on that two line, but in terms of making the tournament in general? I know that the RPI is still good. I know they still have a lot of opportunities in the Big Ten probably isn't going to hurt them as much as it would some years, but just any sort of um, indication on your part that 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 spot may not be as solid as Nebraska would hope. Well, I mean, you, you got to win more than one out of six. I mean, that's the, that would be helpful. That's the, that's the the tenuous part of it. I mean, you know, the RPI is going to be good. So you have a little bit of, in, in terms of like the, the, the tournament qualification, you have a little bit of wiggle room there, but I mean, you gotta, you know, you're getting into mid April. I mean, this, this is the time when you have to win tough series. Um, you know, Nebraska does have some pretty no still has some notable midweek games left. I mean, you have to play Creighton one more time. You've got, I believe K state and Kansas both still on the raw on the schedule. So th- there's opportunity there. Um, you know, I, it, it's just going to kind of come down to, getting it turned around a little bit um and and you know we'll see if nebraska can do that but they, they just got to be you know a little bit finer at the plate a little bit better on the mound um because i i think it is a good team i think they have the potential to be a good team it's just that they uh you know we're, we're in the middle of april here and i i still don't think they've played their best baseball either so um you know we'll see what they can what they can get done but I, 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 you know, even when there was kind of the conversation about hosting, I mean, it, it felt like Nebraska was probably going to settle in as a two seed somewhere. And I mean, having to go to, to Terre Haute would be, I, I think Nebraska would take that as a two seed if it were offered right now. I mean, I think that would be a pretty good draw for them. Brunson, let me, let me cross over here to football. And after 20 years of, 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 you know, being in the, in the desert, what is it about, in your opinion, that makes Coach Rule so assuring that everything's going to be okay? Um, I think he's got a plan. I, I think, you know, a, a plan helps. I think a plan that's worked elsewhere helps. Do you hear it? Um, do I hear the plan? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you see it, right? Okay. Like, you, you see with the way that they've built – this team, um, they, they've built it up front, I think, in a better way than what others have done in, over the last 20 years, uh, to use your, your your time frame there. I mean, I, I think that helps. I think the way that they're building a roster in a very challenging era to build a roster, I, I think that gives you some trust. And I don't know, I mean, I, I think from the way he communicates, I think, you know, I, I, he, he gets it. I, I think he understands Nebraska. Well, I think he understands Nebraska's place, um, you know, in college football right now, pretty well. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, the, the reason that you brought him in as a head coach was you wanted somebody that's kind of built things and, and built things for the long term. And, I, I think you can kind of start to see the pieces falling into place a little bit. I mean, they've got to obviously show up on the field this fall and, and take a step forward from where they were last year. But I mean, even, you know, for, for the, the quarterback issues aside, I mean, I think you could see an improvement in play that, you know, leads you to believe that things are trending in the right direction here going into year two. Mm. Bruns, uh, kind of going off of that same idea, you know, we heard Rule talk about, in his press conference on Tuesday, you know, the transfer portal being open and guys have their, have their right if they want to go in. And <laughs> I got the sense, and maybe I'm reading too much into it because I, you know, I, I kind of d- decipher that thing. Yeah, he's a real surface level thinker, bro. Pretty aggressively. <laughs> well, you know, me and my brother both, you've been around the family for a long time. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I hear that and I go, he really is just genuinely telling you out loud that I know better than you what's best for you. If you want to leave, yeah. that's your right, but it'd be stupid. Like that's what I that's what I hear when he says that. Am I am I crazy? No, not at all. I mean, I mean, it, it's like a parent talking to their kid. Like, yeah, you could you could do that, but I don't I don't think you want to do that. Um, 
Like legally, you're allowed to. <laughs> and make it a yeah, good yeah. idea. The rule, the rules say you're allowed to do that. Um, no, I, I think, I, I think that yeah, and he's said that that in different ways too, uh, beyond just this week about, you know, making sure that you kind of got to know, you know, what you you got to if you're going to do it, you got to have a plan and. You know, there, there's been some guys from Nebraska that have gone in the portal that, you know, I think have ended up in maybe in better spots and some of that, you know, guys that, you know, maybe weren't power five type guys. And, and you, you know, you go down to a mid-major, you're going to play more, it's a better fit. That's great. But, I mean, I, I, I think that was kind of like, a, you know, beware of what's out there. Like, I, I think Nebraska, more than a lot of other schools, has kind of built their – their roster and the way they do things to, to focus more on all, you know, 85 or 95 or however many guys um, are, are getting scholarship money right now um, versus other places where it probably feels a little bit more top heavy. I mean, I, I I'm sure Nebraska is going to have guys go in the portal, but I mean, I, I, I would, you know, hope that it's more guys that are, you know, looking for more playing time and not just doing it to see what's out there. Cause there's so many guys that enter the portal right now. And it's they they might have played their last down of football just because you know if, if you're going in there and you don't know where you're going to end up um, that that's a pretty scary place to be I think you know it's interesting Brunson because now we're going through all the you know it's like he says one thing and it's like bird crumbs and we're super <laughs> hungry and we just gobble them all up but now I'm going through these exercises of the portal and some of this is due to Nebraska's roster size right some of it is mm-hmm. due to the you know the the we we saw a couple of, of of recruiting guys yesterday. Link, a couple of DBs out of SMU, one of TCU, and I'm thinking, all right, the portal may have some guys enter it, and you're going to think, ah, they could be decent players. What happened? But it could just be kind of a numbers thing based on the way that he's building this thing. Is that kind of like self weeding? Is he preemptively preparing us for? Hey, listen. I told you kind of my philosophy. It's up to those guys. Don't panic. I got this. Yeah. No, I mean, I, and, and I think when he says, yeah, that's, you know, the, it's their right to do that. I mean, yeah, guys, guys are going to leave. And he went, know, it, it, Br- Br- he went as far as to say, you know, I, I talk to guys, their coaches after they sure. leave. Like he didn't have to say that, but I wonder, and I'm like, am I reading into this? Like, He'll still care about you when you go. Like, why did yeah. he say that? I, I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> it's also an opportunity to you know get that out there, right? Like that's uh, yes. that's what they're trying to do. And <laughs> like I told you, I mean, it, it, I think they've got the culture within those walls in a pretty good place. At least they think they do. And I mean that that's part of it. Also, is just also saying this is what we do. You know, I mean, it, it's not he's not also saying that for just our benefit of like, you know, it's it's also talking to the players a little bit too, of like, you know, this is, this is how we are. This is what it's going to be. And, you know, if you want to be a part of it, fine. If you don't, that's, we're we're good there too. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but I, I, I would expect that I I would be very surprised if anybody left Nebraska, that it wasn't like a, I'm fourth on the depth chart right now. I want to play. I need to go somewhere else kind of a situation. I think I think if anybody leaves, it's going to be more of those types of things. Brunts, as always, you got you got my noodle turning a little bit here. Unfortunately, we we oh, gotta man. we gotta let you go. Um, but so DB gets to bear oh, the brunt dead. of my uh the the brunt of my thoughts here. But uh Brunts the, the, we have... the brunts of your thoughts. <laughs> See, yeah. <laughs> see what you did there, yeah. uh, Brunts. We appreciate you as always. We'll talk to you again next week. So that was good, guys. Thanks. Nice, Br- Br- Bruncey here for Tecate, T- a big Tecate guy. Um, oh, apparently, amazing Daniel likes Tecate too. Yeah, I think I had one like a long time ago. Does I, it have? It has the lightning bolt, right? The orange one. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lightning bolt behind the like words. Is that a red behind? can? I, yeah. I, I don't. I think it's red. I, I don't know orange, anything good that's come out of. Cans with lightning bolts, but hey. I mean, you drink a lot. I mean, were you not a big surge guy? No. (laughs) And the other one, too. um, Bolt? Powerade? uh, Didn't Powerade have a lightning? The the harder, uh, the, 
Is the lemonade have a bolt? The chart, the harder. Oh, Gatorade lemonade? has a lightning bolt, doesn't it? Oh, okay. I, but I don't drink that anymore either. No, but it's not bad. You're not, you're not a hater, aid, are you? No, 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 no. That would be my partner. <laughs> we got more coming up next. <laughs> We're back here on Red Hat Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN, Omaha, ESPN, Tri-Cities, KFOR, Lincoln, that's CB, I'm Ravi Lula, we're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube on the Pillar Exterior stage, and I gotta remind you, gotta go out to our, see our friends at War Horse Sportsbook, whether you're in Lincoln and go to the casino, or you're in Omaha, you can go to Horseman's Park, make sure you check out War Horse Sportsbook, it's the best place in Nebraska to place your sports bets, we got NBA going up, here with the playoffs we got nhl which we're going to talk about next segment as well at warhorse you can bet on nearly every major sporting event and you can do so in a variety of ways straight bets live bets parlays props whatever you can think of they can likely accommodate you make sure you go to warhorsecasino.com slash sportsbook to get a full list of details and house rules that's warhorse sportsbook no bets no glory so Brunt said something there at the end that kind of got the noodle turning a little bit. Why do you let me follow up smart people? What do you mean? If you got the idea from Brunt, why are you going to defer to me? <laughs> because I think you're smart too. Oh, geez. Look at that. See, I'm nice sometimes. Did you see that? That was a total. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I think you're setting me up here. No, so in that that transactional relationship thing that you love so much. <laughs> don't don't get me not, started. Not to go back to Dion is don't don't get me started. Dude, he's got another top forty linebacker. He played ten games. Imagine from Ken, Ken, Kennedy's in the portal. Imagine now. my he, surprise. He re-enters the portal. Imagine my surprise. The people that don't play for Dion. Oh, huh, weird. Stop. Um, you, you see what he's about. You're like, oh no, I'm good here. Peace. It, it was Mike's harder that has the lemon the. The, the lightning bolts. bolt. So for those of you out there, we're just finding drinks with lightning bolts. Random on. bad drinks with lightning bolts. Not all of them are bad. Gatorade. Gatorade's good. I, I like Gatorade. I like Gatorade. I like turtles. I don't know how great it is. That's for fine. You, but well, good they for have, you. They have made z- zero and good the, electri- and good the, the electrolytes. See, I go zero because I, I don't want to wash sugar. Uh, just drink salt water. I don't, a, uh, I don't want to do that. That's there's gross. a bolt beer. B O L T. It's got the uh, it's got the bolt flash on it. Yeah, bolt beer. Um, cool. I'm telling you, it's it's a thing. It's a bad. It's it's a it is a outside of Gatorade. It is a high indicator that you might have a bad beverage on your hands. <laughs> it's not a direct correlation, but high 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 chance there. I didn't know they made hard and harder lemonade. Yeah, there's more alcohol in the harder. Mm. That stuff is, I mean, that stuff will give you a stomach ache just from the sugar. It gets, it gets a little sugary. Like the movie, a river runs through you. <laughs> no, what? No, is that, is that stop reason? it. <laughs> oh, I bet. Hey, I just got my wrist slapped. <laughs> All right, back to Bruncey. Well, so he he's talking about how Coach Rule says, you know, I, I brought up the, hey, it's your right to go in the portal, and then he kind of follows it up with, you know, once you play for me, you always play for me. And I, you know, I talk to guys, coaches, and I still, <laughs> I still talk to, I ask them how they're doing. I still talk to guys after they leave. Is it possible? No, beyond, wait, real quick. Yeah. Did you think of that before I just said it to Brunts? Because when he said it, I was like, why would he say that? I thought about it, but in, in a different way than I did when you said it again. Okay. So I get, I was, because now I'm just looking for like the setups now, because he's always a couple of steps ahead. So that's why I'm trying to galaxy brain this thing. And I might be wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. But we're going to give it a shot. Is it possible? Because we do, we are going to have a roster situation here at oh, some point yeah. where oh, yeah. people are going to be leaving. Maybe a couple people will come in, but you're going to have to have more guys leave than come here. Right. Like that's just the numbers game. Is it possible? He's created such a situation that guys don't want to leave. That he has to tell them, whether in person or through the media, hey, I'm still gonna love you when you're gone. Maybe. Where it's I, like that would be so him though. Well, like to prepare for yes. To prepare for that. Because there's gonna be some guys that he just he knows, and they probably know deep down aren't gonna be able to crack the depth chart in a way that is gonna get the meaningful playing time, yeah, right? Because you know what he's do- what he does for me. He makes it seem like. Um, and maybe it just is that way. Which is why I've been harping on this trust thing and how much do we trust for, mm-hmm. for two months. Like, this isn't – I just didn't get out of the rack and was like, yeah, man, I'm just going to pick at this. Like, 
he's kind of set this thing up mm -hmm. based on what he says, how he acts, how he recruits. Um, okay, hey, listen, stop getting so high and so low. Mm -hmm. Just chill. I got this. Remember, we, he, he gives us the portal talk. He breaks down sequentially the seasons of training. Mm -hmm. He says it's not just about quarterback play. Mm -hmm. He's like the great demo or it's like the great democracy of who can make a video. Mm -hmm. It's hey, in nothing but alphabetical order. Like he almost he sets this this thing like hey, you guys can read into this if you want, mm -hmm. but what I'm telling you is. It's going to be fine. Remember, he's the guy that said out loud, even if T-Dub leaves, yeah, we, we, we play, we, we've always played good defense. We'll play good defense. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait, is White leaving? <laughs> Are you really leaving? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He because just, he, he, everything he said, it's like, shh, chill. It's going to be all right. You just got to trust me. It's going to be like, all right. Why would he say but I that he talks? Hey, players have left. I talked to their coaches. Hey, how's Tim doing? Why is he doing all right since he's left my program? I still care about that guy. Yeah, so I, I think there's – I just said Tim. Shane, if you don't stop breathing into that microphone, I'm going to come down. Have you guys mentioned Joe Cola, by the way? <laughs> just we're, we're not talking about that anymore, Shane. Turn your microphone off. I got to bring Joe Cola up because that was a no. bad drink. That was a <laughs> he hasn't changed that was in 15 bad years. No drink. Dude, Every you drink. stay on delay. <laughs> You gotta stop breathing in the microphone, man. You want me to just like stop breathing? Just like <laughs> not... the... no, turn the microphone <laughs> off. Turn the microphone off. Joe Cola, I said that. Oh, that's to answer your question. You know how many days I leave here with a headache from laughing? Well, like, Shane, who? First of all, never mind. So I gotta I... hold my breath when I talk. Oh Lord. Now, just, well, you just leave the microphone off. You're fine. You, <laughs> Joe like, that's Cola, I, I've said that. I've, I've said that like three times. Joe Cola. All right, man. I'm going to look it up for you. Cool. you got to stop, bro. You have to stop. That's not me. I think that's you. No, it's really not. Because it goes away when you turn your mic off. It's incredible. You good? Yeah. DB, you good? He's so Okay. All right. So, uh, why did he say it three times? I don't know. We had actually moved past that point of the conversation. Sorry, you know. I mean, this is, we're going to derail. Oh, come on, Shane. Ste right. Steven sends. Why, why do you? So, Steven sends in a lightning bolt drink from Steven Seagal. So that's cool. <laughs> See, it's it's like an it's like an Asian energy drink. I mean, are you sure? I mean, there's there's lettering on there that appears to be Asian in origin. Are you sure it's not just pie? Yeah, that's not the pie. That's not the symbol oh, for pie. My bad. That appears to be some kind of lettering. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm not. I'm not fluent in Mandarin. Oh. Although my dad well, does know. Be. My dad does know Cantonese. I don't. Does he have any cashmere chili? That's all I care about. Really. I texted him. He's he's a worse texter than you are. But he's he's pushing eighty, so he has an excuse. Um, were you offended that I asked for an Indian spice? No, nah, I mean I was offended more than I was like, bro. You know I don't cook. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, who else in your life would have an Indian spice? Well, I just didn't want to have to go to the store. Yeah, I don't know. He may not respond back to me. It sometimes it takes a couple days. Can't you just call? I mean, not while we're on the air here, bud. <laughs> You're the only one here that makes phone calls in between breaks. <laughs> I answer. I typically don't uh, make that's them. That's not true. <laughs> Depends on if I that's if I'm not if I have to know right now. Yeah, that's fair. When you got to know now, you got to. Oh, man, I'm so done with you. What did I, I do? I say that once a day. You you say it like eight times a day. All right, well. At least. You said it like three times in the first segment. Jolt Cola, and, that's what it is. And Jolt you, Cola. And you're still I'm here. trying to get up to eight. <laughs> good morning. Are you in a good mood or what? I'm always in a good mood. You seem very hurt right now. Are you gonna you gonna be all right? No, I don't, I don't think it's prudent. It's a little, maybe it sounds a little Pollyannish. I seriously, I, was, I, was, I had to look it up. It's just the low lights. I don't know what that means, Coach. Man, I got pretty. I don't good, know that I can answer that. I got pretty good vocab. I don't know what that means. It's it's the ability to string it 
together in a timely manner. Yeah, no, a lot, exactly. a lot of question. I looked it up. I got it. A now. lot of people know words. They don't know, know what they mean. Yeah, or you know, or they know sodas or ti- timing. It's a. It's. A, uh, we'll need those guys to play well. We'll need the other guys. Timing, timing, Shane. You're, you're listening Forgive to the conversation me. at all. About, timing. So you know what's funny with that? As I talk about recruiting, what's that? You know who's the guy that he likes? Well, he's he's kind of had this. Oh man, this. We call that a tease, I guess. This is your fault. We got to talk hockey now. <laughs> That's okay. I That's, love if you would have just let me get the Joe Cola right away, <laughs> we could have moved on from it. If I tried you, to move. I tried to move on from it. You guys wouldn't. Move, you just if, kept on going at if it. If you were capable of getting the Joe Cola right away, we would have, might have a different conversation. Here. Exactly. Exactly. If you guys would have just got to it. It's all right. I uh, mean, I didn't want to bring it up several times, but. I don't think that happens. True. I love hockey. We're going to talk to Dan Rose and coming up next to NHL.com. Talk a little hockey here on our sports radio. Wrapping up the show here on our sports radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, KFOR in Lincoln, live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula here at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. We're on the pillar exterior stage. We welcome in Dan Rosen of NHL.com. Dan, how are you this morning? I'm good. How you doing? Good, good, good. I, Dan, I we know that the East is was late in getting set, and partly due to my Penguins not holding up their end of the deal. But level of surprise that the uh, the the odds favorite will not reside in the Western Conference this year. The the favorite is not in the West. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Because I think Carolina has the best odds right now, right? I don't know. I haven't looked at the odds, to be honest with you, but I, I think the favorite is in the West. Um, I think the Dallas Stars, they're, they're the team that I would pick right now uh, mm. to be Stanley Cup. They, they've got depth. They've got goaltending. They've got size, experience. Um, they've built their team the right way. They, they're, a, they're a perfect example of a team, actually, that did not need to, for lack of a better word, tank in order to get better. They just consistently stayed better. Um, and, and continue to infuse young talent into the into the lineup. Jason Robertson's an example. Lately, now it's Wyatt Johnson and 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 Thomas Harley. So I actually like the Dallas Stars a lot, to be honest with you. And in I, I at the start of the season, I picked the Carolina Hurricanes to represent the East in the uh, Stanley Cup final. I actually picked Dallas, Carolina with Dallas winning. So I'm sticking with that Dallas pick. Mm. And I, I don't want to. I don't think I'm going to amend it. I think I'll stick with it, but I'm not a hundred percent sold. Uh, the Rangers have really impressed me with the way that they've just consistently done it this year, and the Florida Panthers, when healthy, might very well be the best team in the National Hockey. League. That's interesting because you're you're right on in the West. It's eight and a half to one with Dallas and in Colorado, but in the East, the the Panthers are seven and a half to one, but Carolina seven to one right there. I mean, those are some top heavy teams, but how did the Rangers avoid the first round upset like a year ago, considering that rops, that roster depth? Well, last year, you got to remember when the Rangers played the Devils last year, they were, the, they were technically the underdog because the Devils had a better season. Uh, it, 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 it was slim, but they didn't have the experience that the Rangers had. And, I think what the Rangers went through last year was a team that just didn't have an identity. They didn't last season. They did not have an identity this season. They do. They are hard. They compete. And through trades at the deadline, getting guys like Alex Wentenberg, a third line center and Jack Roslovic, who's been playing top line, right wing with Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. They got a lot faster too. They, but their biggest identity right now is they compete. And that's exactly what Peter Laviolette instilled and said we were going to work. And it's easy to say, but the teams that do succeed in the National Hockey League, and everybody's competitive, but it's when it gets down to the nitty-gritty, it's that battle for a puck in the corner when you have to win it. The Rangers have consistently been winning battles all over the ice. Uh, That is an identity for them right now. They did not have it last year. And I don't think they play Washington in the first round, and. Washington was a seller at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. They got in the playoffs in a turtle race at the bottom of the Eastern <laughs> Conference. Uh, I don't think Washington, to be honest, I just don't think Washington stands much of a chance. The, the way the Capitals have to win that series is they've got to keep it low event and low scoring, but the Rangers are a high event, high scoring team. 
We're talking with Dan Rosen, NHL.com. Dan, is there anybody, you know, you described this ability to battle and fight. Is there anybody that's maybe not one of the headliners in either conference that you see that quality in that you think could make things interesting? Well, I mean, look, the, the team that I'm, I, I immediately comes to mind is the Winnipeg Jets. Like, I agree. They're I agree. Small market team. Like they're not a headliner type team because they don't like Nathan McKinnon makes the avalanche a headliner team, right? Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl do that for the Oilers. Um, I mentioned what I really liked about Dallas. Vegas won the Stanley Cup. They're obviously a headliner team, right? Mm -hmm. So the Winnipeg Jets aren't, but the Winnipeg Jets are the best five-on-five defending team in the National Hockey League. Um, They have arguably the best goalie. I think they do have the best goalie this season, Connor Hellebuck. They are going to be nightmare fuel for the Colorado Avalanche. Mm. When they play Colorado, they tend to put a blanket over Nathan McKinnon, and they do a really good job of it. And they say, we're going to stop that guy. you got to beat us with your other guys. And I don't think the Avalanche have the other guys right now without McKinnon driving the bus for them to do that. And the Winnipeg Jets are going to try to shut him down. They're not going to be able to shut him down for seven games. It's just impossible. He's that good. But they don't have to shut him down for seven games. They've got to shut him down for four. And if they do that, they'll win the series. Uh, Dan, you're picking the East. They open with a toughie, a team that they split the the regular season series with in the aisles who can skate. When you look at hockey and these matchups and stylistically, you just reference the difference between the Rangers and their first round opponent. Why is it that hockey is one of the few sports where people out loud say, hey, listen, in the postseason, it's officiated like this. It is different than in the regular season, and it is universally accepted like, hey, that's just the way it is. What is it that's different about playoff hockey and saying those things out loud? Well, I actually think it's we say it and we talk about it, but I don't know that it's necessarily true anymore, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm pretty sure the number of penalties and the number of penalty minutes and power play time in the playoffs last year was pretty close to what it was in the regular season on average. Um, so I think the game is being called in the playoffs. The penalties are being called. As the game wears on, as it gets to the third period, I think it becomes a little bit more gets let out, let go. The difference is the game. The, the, hockey's a game where as the stakes get higher, the intensity gets higher. Mm. Um, and players know that through the course of an 82-game season, and it's the grind, I think it's the hardest season in sports because of how many games you play, yes, the travel, but the wear and tear on your body to play these games it's unlike anywhere else like football is football it's different but they only play 16 or they only play 17 games right i mean so it's it's and every each game is like a car crash ever you know so i understand that the grind of the hockey season guys know it's not that they take nights off it's that they just know i can't i don't have it 100 percent in my tank to do exactly what i need to do all the time and that's why you see slumps and it's why you you know there's parity in the league, I think the parity is great. In the playoffs, it's less practice, less thinking about what to do, and it's just go, go, go. And the intensity gets ratcheted up, and you'll see it Saturday. You'll see it. It's going to be completely different mm-hmm. from what we see tonight in the National Hockey League. And it's just, it's just the nature of the game. And the penalties, I think, are called, and I think there, the game is called well. But the nature of the athlete, the nature of you know the, the game – the intensity ratchets it up, and the energy just gets so much higher. In the building, if you're in the building for a Stanley Cup playoff game, it's just different than it is in the regular season. And players, few, they, they get fuel off of that. Dan, you mentioned Dallas is the team that you really like coming out of this thing as the favorite. But if, for whatever reason, they do trip up, where do you see some potential flaws that could be exposed? For the Dallas Stars, potential flaws? Uh, I don't think they have many. Potentially, I, I don't want to say this because I like the guy a lot, and I think he's really good in net, Jake Ottinger, but he was struggling this season for a while. He picked his game up here in the last quarter of the season, but there was a struggle for Jake Ottinger, and he would admit that too. And if he goes back to having a little bit of a struggle, it's going to be really hard for them. And they like if you're able to, I, I'll say – force the Dallas Stars to have to beat you with Jamie Benn and their third line, you're doing a good job. 
they can still beat you with that line. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean by their depth. But if you're able to limit Jason Robertson and Rope Hintz and Joe Pavelski and that line in particular, then you've got a shot to beat the Dallas Stars. But that's why I said I think their depth is so good. Their defense is, is strong. They added Chris Tanev in the, you know, at the trade deadline. Not a headline type guy, but a really good snarly type defenseman who moves the puck really well too, is an underrated puck mover. Uh, I think that they've got pretty much everything going on for them right now. A classic old school series with Boston and Toronto. Their postseason familiarity is unprecedented. But Boston owned them in the regular season 4-0. Toronto's tried everything. They shook up management. They've made moves. Is this series any sort of indictment on how you feel about Austin Matthews? Because it's almost like they've tried everything to make sure that he can still be the guy. But it seems like there's a lot of pressure on Marner Marner and and, and Matthews. Well, I mean, it's Toronto, so there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. There's no question about it. And they've got to deliver, right? I mean, they finally win a playoff round last year, and then they get smoked in the second round. And everybody forgets that they won a playoff round for the first time since 2004 because they got smoked in the second round. It wasn't good enough. Nothing's going to be good enough until they win the Stanley Cup, right? I mean, it's just obvious that way. Um, it's I like the I like the Leafs in this series, to be honest with you. And it's against the grain, and I know it. But I don't see how the Bruins match up down the middle. Matthews and Tavares, and you can throw Marner in the mix there if you want. Nylander, too. Um, he's playing, I what, 98 talent. points for Nylander? Yeah. Oh, he's been terrific all season. The high-end talent for the Leafs is better than the high-end talent for the Bruins. And if they can get it going, and if Matthews can keep it going, I like him. The goaltending's a different situation. Uh, but I believe in a seven-game series, they can get enough. They can score enough to win. They've got to, or else there's going to be some changes there in okay. Toronto. And it probably would start with that coach. It's Dan Rosen Fantastic from stuff, NHL.com. Dan, Dan, we appreciate you, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up again soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. That was uh, Dan Rosen from NHL.com. It was also Damon's dessert for putting up with the, uh, the everything I put him through every day. It was a little <laughs> treat I gave for him there. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>